Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small firm located in central Minnesota. If you are ever uh, in Minnesota and run into any sort of legal issues, please give me a call. Let me see if I can help out. Uh, but <laughs> as for as for now, thank you so much for being here, uh, watching this live stream. Let's uh, let's talk about a couple things. Um, tonight, we're going to cover, uh, as you can see in the giant window next to my small face, uh, we're going to cover, start by covering uh, Zuckerberg's Senate hearing in a very specific context. Um, and not just Senate, we'll, we'll have some stuff from the, uh, from the House hearing as well. But we're going to do this in a very specific context um, because I have asserted in the past, and I believe this to be true, that in the next, over the next decade, really, we're going to see uh, some big movement in how First Amendment protections are applied to private companies, such as Facebook, Twitter, Gab, YouTube, uh, any of these communication platforms that are becoming ubiquitous tools for users to uh, go ahead and, and share uh, information with friends and family, um, with with how Facebook is and other companies are are enacting a sort of censorship on their platforms. Uh, they will deny it as censorship, but it is the suppression of certain ideas uh, that are protected First Amendment speech. Um, so we're going to talk about that to start. But this is a free form, uh, very free form live stream. So this is not going to be hyper focused. And if you guys have some good questions to distract me from that, feel free to ask them. And if you have some, uh, you know, if you have anything uh, to add, you know, back to this, we'll, we'll go there. If you want to go somewhere else completely, we can go there. I'm, I'm fine with bouncing around. Um, one thing I would like to implement in the, uh, <laughs> uh, good luck, Carlos, buddy. Stay safe driving in the snow. <laughs> um, and, and Andy8135, I do not recommend that course of action. You can take that as, as legal advice. But, um, one thing I want to implement on these less focused Friday live streams is, uh, an ask a lawyer segment. And that's, or not a segment, but a theme running throughout the whole show. So when we have one of these where uh, the topic is kind of fluid and we don't have specific uh, documents or major issues to, to really delve into, I want people to actually feel free to ask some legal questions and, uh, and I will do my best to answer them without obviously giving specific legal advice. If there is specific legal advice, it will likely be you need to contact a lawyer or you need to contact me privately and we can get more details. But uh, just general legal questions or ideas or themes um, that you find interesting or you're curious about or maybe someone you know is is working on right now. Uh, so let's uh, let's get to the first super chat. Kevin Flesher says, Dad gave me a bottle of Jameson Black Barrel tonight as a gift. Here's a drink to you, Nick. Always watch when I can. I know you do, buddy, and I always appreciate it when you are watching. And, uh, and I appreciate the chat as well. And that is a very great uh, segue for something I wanted to cover here. Uh, on Monday, I had an interview with um, the first interview on this channel, which was a ton of fun for me. And hopefully it was fun for you guys as well with uh, Mr. Stephen Birch, who is uh, Dick Masterson's trademark attorney. And um, he came on and uh, he incidentally had sent me a gift that came the next day. Uh, unrelated to the interview, um, I, I don't know specifically when he sent it, but it would necessarily had to have been sent before the interview. But uh, speaking of Kevin, that is my Jameson Black Barrel as well. So uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to open this tonight or if I was going to wait, but a huge thank you to Mr. Stephen Birch. I really, really... Uh, appreciate this is so much this is such an awesome gift and um it's potent so we're gonna try some 
Mm. <laughs> Matthew Trenchick says, so the topics are fluid just like genders are? Apparently, buddy. Apparently. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So, uh, cheers to you, Kevin. And Steven, of course. Mmm. That is good stuff. That is fantastic. Wow. Wow. It's got a kick to it for sure. But it's it's good. Surprisingly smooth for the alcohol content. So, uh, yeah. It is good. You are correct, sir. All right. So, um, let me set, uh, let me set up that, that legal question segment. If you have a legal question, uh, for the ask a lawyer section. Um, I will ask that those be super chats. Uh, if you have a specific legal topic that you want me to delve into on these free segments, uh, go ahead, super chat that question in, and I will happily address that topic. We can segue in it for a couple minutes and go down kind of the rabbit hole of ideas. I'm happy to do that. Uh, lots of fun for me, and I always appreciate the Super Chats. Uh, as always, if you have generalized questions about the content that we're covering and you don't want a Super Chat, I'm not going to require you to uh, do a Super Chat to, to ask a question. Certainly not. Um, but uh, if you want to, on these things, if you want to kind of derail, I'll ask that you do a Super Chat. Otherwise, I'm going to keep kind of focused on whatever topic we're covering at the time. Uh, and you're free to ask questions in the in the sort of free area at the end. Um, Next point of business is right there, which patreon.com forward slash law explaining is my Patreon account. If you like this content, if you want to suggest content, go there, uh, you know, become a patron if you would like, if you, if you like what I do, I really appreciate it. Um, we have a discord channel that is reserved for patrons, uh, at the $5 plus level. We do live chats pretty much every Wednesday, um, uh, we have other stuff in Discord as well. Uh, I I play video games with with uh, Patreons, um, you know, when I can, and uh, I'm happy to do that. And we have good conversations. So uh, if you if you want to check that out, go ahead and do so, please. I would really appreciate it. Uh, you do not have to subscribe with money to get some of the features. Like there is an audio feed if you want uh, uh, the podcast version of all of these videos comes out by audio on Patreon, as well as on SoundCloud and Google and iTunes. So, uh, feel free to go there. Uh, good night, Hamilton Burger. I appreciate your presence, even if it is short-lived. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of this. <laughs> we'll see if it can be focused enough to not be ridiculous. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get started here. So, we have this um, transcript. Did I miss anything? I don't know if I missed anything. Um, oh, I did miss one one kind of big thing. Uh, if you haven't heard, we are conducting airstrikes on Syria, I believe, as we speak, or we conducted them a little bit earlier uh, tonight. So, you know, um, hopefully let's <laughs> let's just have faith, some faith in our in our leaders uh, that uh, that they will be making the right decisions there and that this won't turn into a giant international disaster. We do have support from some other uh, some other governments like um, France and the UK. Whatever support from France and the UK look like, uh, I don't know. Um, all I know is that we are doing airstrikes. So let's uh, let's just hope that um, the tempers of world leaders uh, are kept in check and we don't end up back in a situation uh, like the Cold War, because there are a lot of parallels from now to the Cold War, which are a little frustrating uh, for people who don't want to see um, anybody at war, uh, much less us. So, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, no, no way to tell right now what the reaction will be. Russia is making a, a, a puffy sort of statement about retaliation or, you know, holding people accountable. But, you know, they've, they've made such statements in the past. Uh, Senor McAnderface, uh, I am 36, 36, 
36. Yeah, 36. I'll turn 37 in December. So, you'd rather have faith that the other leaders don't do anything stupid seems more logical. That as it may be. But we'll see. We'll see. Yes, and the, the mainstream media <laughs> told you you're already at war with Russia for collusion. Yeah. Uh, don't listen to the media. Oh, that's a segment we might get to in this... Um, in this trans in this uh, Senate hearing. So I have this transcript, but fear not, I am not going to read through the entire transcript. Um, uh, I'm actually, you know, not going to read through much of it, might use it for a reference point, but I actually have videos uh, that we're going to do some live commentary on and we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, uh, here, here we are. Uh, Chuck Grassley is uh, hosting the Committee on the Judiciary and Commerce, Science, and Transportation. Uh, he's, so it's a multiple, multiple committee meeting. Uh, we welcome everyone to today's hearing on Facebook, social media privacy and the use and abuse of data. So they're setting the floor as a very adversarial hearing right from the start. Grassley says, although not unprecedented, this is a unique hearing. Um, I mean, I guess if it's not unprecedented, it, it can't really be unique, can it? Because if it's precedented, then it's happened before. Uh, you know, DRM McMoney, D Dr. McMoney, Dr. McMoney, that's a good question. And we'll talk about that because I will rant about the Monopoly thing in a little bit when we get to that video. So I do have it queued up. So hold on, hold on to your butts for that one. Uh, the issues we will consider range from data privacy and security to consumer protection, the Federal Trade Commission, Commission enforcing, enforcement, touching on jurisdictions of these two committees. We have 44 members between our two committees. That may not seem like a large group by Facebook standards, <laughs> but it is significant here for a hearing in the United States Senate. We will do our best to keep things moving efficiently given our circumstances, uh, which Congress has never done in its life. Uh, we will begin with opening statements from the chairman and ranking members of each committee, starting with Chairman Thune, then proceeding to Mr. Zuckerberg's opening statement. We will then move on to questioning. Each member will have five minutes to question witnesses. Because, <laughs> guys, in five minutes, you know, an agended congressman is going to get out lots of useful information. That's why these hearings are such an idiotic way to conduct conduct things. I mean, it's nice that they have these public hearings, but, uh, you know, you've got 44 members, five minutes apiece. That's a long hearing. So, uh, and it, it never goes very well. <laughs> Kmart says our missiles good for the economy and Canada doesn't want a second cold war. We're like stuck right between you guys. Uh, missiles are good for some segments of the economy. They're very expensive. Uh, they produce high, they, they require high tech manufacturing jobs. Um, you know, they support military jobs as well. Uh, I, I would say constructing missiles is an economic good. Uh, launching them is maybe less of an economic good. Uh, it's a, it's a hard place to be because launching them necessarily means that we're, uh, going to have to produce more. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's like a broken window fallacy, right? The idea that we're launching missiles creates jobs. I don't know if that's the best way to look at things. I'm sure some people do, but I will also say that the, the public defense is a key role of government. For everybody's uh, problem with how much America spends on defense, there are a few enumerated responsibilities of Congress, and one of them is to provide for the common defense. So uh, we should eliminate waste from the Department of Defense, absolutely, and there is tons of it. And our Department of Defense is way bigger than, than anyone else's by a long shot. Uh, but there's value to that in, in its own way, in its own way of intimidation, and, uh, and a statement to the world. So on the whole, that's a difficult question to answer, but, um, yeah. So back to Facebook, uh, Beefius asks, is it just me or does, did the Facebook Senate hearing kind of seem like a bunch of senators trying to get Zuckerberg on record endorsing their pet project legislation? Now that sounds like a cynical opinion, sir. I would not 
I would not suggest that the esteemed members of Congress would use a, uh, a hearing to grandstand and get the buy-in of one of the world's most identifiable uh, artificial intelligences. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> Senor McAnderboat. Um, I don't know if I fully identify as conservative anymore. Uh, we'll say that, uh, my political views exist on a spectrum <laughs> that is fluid. Uh, I, I don't care about Paul Ryan retiring. Not a wink. Good riddance. Go away. Go away. All of these people, I, actually, I want all of Congress to retire and all of the Senate to retire, and I want a new breed, and I want term limits after that. Uh, even even the guys I like, I want them out. I want all of them out. This hearing is a good reminder as to why, because... <sighs> I mean, these people are, are, are just brilliant, aren't they? LaCambra, love your work, Nick. Take my dollary dues and let me ask you this. What would it take to get you to leave Facebook? Just how scummy do they have to be? It would take a lot, man. It's a cool tool. I love Facebook in a lot of ways. I love what it does. I love the connection. Although I will say that joining private groups has made Facebook far better. Uh, but it worries me that Facebook does employ various uh their various censorship motivations in these private groups as well i think that private groups uh should be really open season um outside of specifically illegal activities and we're going to talk about that when we get to ted cruz's conversation with mark zuckerberg and we'll also discuss the fact that i'm pretty sure mark zuckerberg is the first known terminator um so here we go uh, we will anticipate a couple short breaks later in the afternoon. Great. Wonderful. So Senator John Thune, how old is John Thune? Like 400, 500 years old? Today's hearing is extraordinary. It's extraordinary to hold a joint committee hearing. It's even more extraordinary to have a single CEO testify before nearly half of the United States Senate. But then Facebook is pretty extraordinary. More than 2 billion people use Facebook every month. 1.4 billion use it every day. More than the population of any country on earth except China. And more than four times the population of the United States. It's also more than 1,500 times the population of my home state of South Dakota. Oh. This is like a... Uh, <laughs> this is like an ad for Facebook. <laughs> Can I run ad block on John Thune? Plus, roughly 45% of American adults report getting at least some of their news from Facebook. Uh, on Facebook. Not from Facebook, right? Facebook is not a news content creator, typically speaking. John Thune is 57, thank you. <laughs> Voices like the land we stream, please. Uh, <laughs> John Thune's got sort of a, a deep John Thune. At least that's how he sounds to me. I just listened to his dumb self, didn't I? Do I have Thune on the... No, I don't have Thune. I don't have him on there. I don't know how he sounds. We'll have to see. Uh, as I keep drinking, the voices will probably come out. Let's see. In many resp respects, Facebook's incredible reach is why we're here today. We're here because of what you, Mr. Zuckerberg, have described as a breach of trust. A quiz app used by approximately 300,000 people led to information about 87 million Facebook users being obtained by the company Cambridge Analytica. That's interesting. Do Zuck in a robot lizard man voice. There are plenty of... I'll just let Zuck do that himself. <laughs> Kevin Flesher asks, has YouTube screened this for fake newsery? Oh, buddy, I'm sure... I'm sure it'll get... Uh, so here's, here's how my videos about major platforms like Google and Facebook work. Uh, they get demonetized for 24 to 72 hours, and then they eventually get monetized. But in that demonetized phase, they don't get shared as much. They don't get they don't show up on the the side lists as suggested as much, and it really hurts the amount of views that I get, and uh, and it it hurts ad revenue a little bit. Uh, not that my videos make a ton of ad revenue, and and I'm not super complaining about that. I'm more complaining about the exposure uh, than the than the dollar revenue. Um, just because, uh, 
you know, I think I think uh, I like I like opinions being out there, and I certainly like my opinions being added to uh, the public conversation. So, um, there are plenty of questions about the behavior of Cambridge Analytica, and we expect to hold a future hearing on Cambridge and similar firms. But as you've said, this is not likely to be an isolated incident. A fact demonstrated by Facebook's suspension of another firm just this past weekend. You promise that when Facebook discovers other... And uh, just as a brief aside, I'm only going to read the opening statements because I want to set the tone. Uh, after the opening statements, we'll get to the video. I'm going to read through the opening statements and then we'll we'll get to the videos. But I, I want to set the tone with these opening statements. And I'm not going to read the entire thing. Like I said, this is uh, 130 pages long and we're not going to do that. <laughs> you promise promised that when Facebook discovers other apps that had access to large amounts of user data, you will ban them and tell those affected. And that's appropriate, but it's unlikely to be enough for the 2 billion Facebook users. Um, let me clarify something, Senator Thune. Your job has nothing to do with 2 billion Facebook users. Your job has everything to do with American Facebook users. You represent us. And I frankly do not care how Facebook monetizes any country other than the United States. That's up to those states, uh, those countries, those nations, whatever you want to call them, territories, areas, whatever government entity may exist. And your job has nothing to do with uh, dealing with how Facebook handles Canadian user data or, you know, anyone in Europe or Africa or Asia or the like five people who are in Antarctica. <laughs> Just kidding. Antarctica is obviously a ring around the disc uh, and not not down um, in any sort of southern respect. It is all around us. And uh, if you go to the edge of it, you fall off. We know this, obviously. Nicholas Melchiori says, can I sue Al Gore because I always have have to drive in uh, god awful of weather whenever I leave St. Paul? Yes, yes. And he should be sued and humiliated constantly. There are 1.2 billion American Facebook users. <laughs> yeah, I know. I cut off the I cut off the page numbers, but um, I can bring it here. There, we're on page number three of 130. So, uh, but yeah, actually, America is responsible for policing the world. I learned that from Team America. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I know they fall within the jurisdiction of other countries. And those other countries have their, you know, they have the duty to watch out for their own citizens. Uh, our Congress people only have the duty to watch out for us. Ketchup Pizza says, war, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing, buddy. Huh. IT Weeb says, if I post on social media, go take a car ride with Landwe, could it legally be considered a death threat? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I would not recommend getting into a car. Um, also, you may be uh, an accessory to driving uh, while intoxicated. Can you be a um, uh, moderator? Is, have you heard, like, is it possible to conspire to drive under the influence? Like, is that a conspiracy or an accessory crime? That's a that's a great question if you have a crim law attorney, because I, I don't know if that logically can exist, but I hope so. Gats, gats. Who's worse, flat earthers or sovereign citizens? Oh, I don't know that they're, that either is, uh, worse is a relative question. And I don't want to imply that either are bad. Um, let me clarify something with sovereign citizens. Uh, I gave them, you know, some grief in the sovereign citizen live stream last week, but it's not the principles of sovereign citizenship that I have a problem with. Okay. The, like I, I, I think I recommended it on stream, but uh, Henry David Thoreau's On Civil Disobedience is a great, great uh, essay, and it's worth consideration what individual anarchy looks like. And I know people will scoff at that because of what we're conditioned to expect from a relationship with our government. Uh the reason that it's interesting is because prior to 1906, really, with the passage of the Worst Amendment, the 16th Amendment, uh, and, and the income tax, right, there, and then prior to 1957 and the passage of the Immigration Naturalization Act, 
you could live here and not be subject to the rule of government. You could, and you would also similarly not be afforded some of the protections of said government. Um, and that's an interesting concept. And that's what Thoreau is really discussing in On Civil Disobedience is, well, what if I just want to be in the country and not actually partake of the protections under it? Not that he wouldn't be subject to any laws, but that he would be exempt from certain duties. Uh, not exempt from law, but exempt from duty. The duty to pay taxes, for example. The duty to pay for civil services. Like, you pay a property tax... I, I live in this house. I own this house free and clear of anything. I do, I'm not obligated to a bank or a mortgager, but I have to pay annually to be on my own property. And it's ostensibly for certain services. Well, what if I don't want them? What if I don't want fire services? Or what if I want to privately contract with them? Though that That is a thing that used to exist in this country and it doesn't anymore. So while I, I you know... I gave grief to sovereign citizens because of the method by which they're making their protest uh, and, and the, the screeching and the shrieking and the bad citations to law. In principle, I think the idea of individualized anarchy is something we should, it should always be there as a foil to the status quo. Uh, but as it goes, sovereign citizens are worse than flat earthers. <laughs> Because sovereign citizens, uh, you know, they, they cause issues in the process of, of their beliefs, whereas flat earthers are just really hilarious. So D. Dotson 45 says, if I tap a keg and put it in the passenger seat, is that open container asking for a friend's dog lawyer? That's a good question. And uh, I, I would say yes. <laughs> in in pretty much all cases, but technically it would be state specific on how they define a container. Um, so that's, that's an interesting sort of proposition, but I would suggest that, uh, the court would, uh, be willing to stretch the definition of container to include a ke a tapped keg. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, gats, gats, yes, I have my doubts too. I really do. <laughs> I agree with you on that doubt, but, um, you know, I, I want to point out that the idea of individual anarchy is something that I, you know, I consider quite a bit. Uh, as I've said before, I'm somewhat of a libertarian, although not like affiliated with the political party, but just the concept of, of unabashed freedom. Fuck this stuff. Oh, okay. Never mind. So let's, uh, let's move on back to Facebook. Uh, no, your colon does not count as a container. Is it open? I hope not. If it is, uh, you should call a doctor. Um, okay. So one reason that so many people are worried about this incident is what it says about how Facebook works. The idea that for every person who decided to try an app, information about nearly 300 other people was scraped from your services is, to put it mildly, disturbing. Now, as to the data breach, I'm not sure, did it, uh, and, and I think my moderator is probably more well-read on the privacy aspect of this. Um, as, as that's something she's more interested in. So if she wants to chime in, feel free to let me know. But was it scraping private data uh, or just public data? I can't imagine it was scraping private data uh, from, their, from their friends list, but maybe it was. Um, so if you know, let me know. We're still on page three. <laughs> okay. Uh, the recent, so... And the fact that those 87 million people may have technically consented to making their data available doesn't make those people feel any better. Well, I'm sorry that it doesn't make people feel any better, but we are posting things publicly, uh, and there are ways to limit that public, uh, that public exposure. And I think Facebook actually, like, to be deferential, I think they do an okay job of letting people know how to maintain privacy in their settings. But, uh, you know, maybe not. Kevin Flesher says, sovereign citizens, perfect example of well-intentioned idiots. Uh, maybe, maybe. Um, but I think a lot of them, you know, I think a lot of sovereign citizens are, are duped uh, by, by people promoting an incomplete view. It'd be like if I came on here and started promoting something that was, uh, you know, completely 
opposite of the law and not not like a legal opinion on what the law is that is wrong, but like something that is actively incorrect, not because I made a mistake or because the court disagrees with me, but because I know like if I went on here and said murder is OK or something like that. OK, if you use these magic words. And people get the idea that, oh, well, you know, uh, there, there's a set of magic ideas and words that if I just ignore uh, the government in these categories, then I can do whatever I want and they can't stop me. And that's not a, uh, that's not a healthy view. Um, government has authority, whether you grant it to them or not, for better or worse. Uh, but <laughs> so I think a lot of people get taken in by the idea. Uh, so... I, well-intentioned idiots, maybe. I don't think all of them are idiots. I think a lot of sovereign citizens um, are are intelligent people that get wrapped up in an area that they don't fully understand by someone who speaks confidently or document or or literature that that looks competent, written by someone with some sort of credential, and that's unfortunate. Uh, Gats, Gats, I don't understand people who thought Facebook was private. Pro-life tip, if you're using a product for free, that means you are the product. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's a very good point. Is my info being retained? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what about the legal magic words of beautiful African-American woman? Gets you out of everything, right? Like, and, and gets other people into trouble. That's the, that's the uh, point there. Uh, Caps Capone says, good night, Mr. Rackets. I'll watch the rest of the stream tomorrow. Godspeed. Uh, you too, buddy. Sleep well. Okay. Uh, the recent revelation that malicious actors were able to utilize Facebook's default privacy settings to match email addresses and phone numbers found on the so-called dark web to public Facebook profiles, potentially affecting all Facebook users only adds fuel to the fire. What binds these two, and I don't believe for a moment that uh, Mr. Thune understands a word of that paragraph that he just said. I know Facebook has taken several steps and intends to take more to address these issues. Nevertheless, some has warned that the actions of Facebook and ta is taking to ensure that third parties do not obtain data from unsuspecting users while necessary will actually serve to enhance Facebook's own ability to market such data exclusively. Yes. And uh, what is the problem with that? Like that's, that's worded in a way that it sounds nefarious, but yeah, Facebook, so Facebook is going to prevent people from breaching their system to their own benefit. Yes. Okay. I'm okay with that. Most of us understand that whether you are using Facebook or Google or some other online service, we are trading certain information about ourselves for free or low cost services. But for this model to persist, both sides of the bargain need to know the stakes that are involved. Right now, I'm not convinced that Facebook's users have the information they need to make meaningful choices. Well, how about Dish Network or DirecTV's users? That's my question. Or, or Charter or uh, Cox Broadcasting. Uh, any of these uh, cable companies, they also are collecting data. Demographic data on viewership uh, for advertising revenue existed long before Facebook was even conceived. So the, this, I, I find this to be uh, much faux outrage, um, from people who sold our data straight up the river, right? Uh, this is Congress's real problem is that Facebook has access to data that they don't. That's probably their actual beef, uh, or any cell carriers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in the past, many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle have been willing to defer to tech companies' efforts to regulate themselves, but this may be changing. That sounds promising, right? Congress usually gets it right. Just last month, in overwhelming bipartisan fashion, when all of the idiots agree, you know we're in good shape. Congress voted to make it easier for prosecutors and victims to go after websites that knowingly facilitate sex trafficking. Uh, that's going to apply to drugs. It, it will. It always does. It's going to get there. Uh, if you post about weed online, I strongly suggest you stop. This should be a wake-up call for the tech community. We want to hear more without delay about what Facebook and other companies plan to do to take greater responsibility for what happens on their platforms. <laughs> then why do you pass laws immunizing them from what happens on their platforms? Like, why do you do that? Gats Gats, 2004 Zuckerberg says, these idiots trust me with all their information. 
2018, Zuckerberg, you can trust me, robot smile. I think you left off the beep, boop, boop, pop. <laughs> don't let Cuckerberg off the hook. The man does diabolical things for a living. Oh, don't worry, buddy. <laughs> I have no, no love lost, uh, no love for, for Zuckerberg at all. Uh, that We're getting there. We're getting there. Just because there's uh, 44 dummies asking Zuckerberg questions doesn't mean that Zuckerberg isn't uh, a rather horrifying figure. Okay, how will you protect users' data? How will you inform users about the changes that you are making? And how do you intend to proactively stop harmful conduct instead of being forced to respond to it months or years later? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Mr. Zuckerberg, in many ways, you and the company that you created, the story that you've created represents the American dream. Many are incredibly inspired by what you've done. At the same time, you have an obligation and it's up to you to ensure that, that dream does not become a privacy become must be become. Uh, they got apparently his accent in there. A privacy nightmare for the scores of people who use Facebook. This hearing is an opportunity to speak to those who believe in Facebook and those who are deeply skeptical about it. We are listening. America is listening. And quite possibly the world is listening too. Which is, that just goes to show you the character of Senate of the Senate, right? Right there. A little bit of uh, self-important puffery. Uh, no weed talking about any, anywhere, nowhere online. What about Leafly? I just, I strongly suggest that people, uh, in, if there's a crackdown on one crime through specific legislation, it's, a, and it's effective, it's a matter of time before it applies to drugs and a lot more people end up in jail over nonsense. In your legal opinion, who's a bigger cuck, Maddox or Zuck? It's Maddox, obviously. Um, because when people F with Facebook, they're F and Zuck's baby, not his girl, right? What about psychological experience that Facebook runs on minors without the consent of their guardians? Don't tell me what to do. Uh, oh, FOSTA. Okay. Oh, <laughs> back page. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't I don't want to like read that article in the middle of the drink. Uh, in the middle of the drink, <laughs> in the middle of the stream. Oh no! Oh no! I'm further away from a whiskey sponsorship because I said the word drink. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Now ranking mem member <laughs> Diane Feinstein. All right. I have opinions on Diane Feinstein. Let's see how competent her opening statement is. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Grassley, Chairman Thune, thank you for both holding but thank you both for holding this hearing. Mr. Zuckerberg, thank you for being here. You have a real opportunity this afternoon to lead the industry and demonstrate a meaningful commitment to protecting individual privacy. We have learned over the past few months and we've learned a great deal that's alarming. Okay. We've seen how foreign actors are abusing social media platforms like Facebook to interfere in elections. <laughs> that's rich, Diane. That's, that's, I mean, come on. Okay, and take millions of Americans' personal information without their knowledge in order to manipulate public opinion and target individual voters. You're, uh, you're really stretching at least the public disclosure of what's happened there. Specifically on February 16th, Special Counsel Mueller issued an indictment against the Russia-based Internet Research Agency and 13 of its employees for interfering uh, operations targeting... I guess it's supposed to be interference because there's a sick there. Interference operations targeting the United States. Through this 37-page indictment, we learn that the IRA... Man, I wish their, don't you wish that their acronym was IRS just because? Ran a coordinated campaign through 470 Facebook accounts and pages out of over 2 billion, okay? The campaign included ads and false information to create discord and harm Secretary Clinton's campaign. That's a little one-sided. 
And the content was seen by an estimated 157 million Americans. Uh, the IRA ran ads on both sides of the aisle, Feinstein. <laughs> the only fair way to influence elections is with conventional weapons. Right. <laughs> and that's a good question. Since when has the U.S. government given one iota of a poop about privacy? Uh, I mean, it's been a long time been a long time. A month later, on March 17th, news broke that Cambridge Analytica exploited the personal information of approximately 50 million Facebook users without their knowledge on per or permission, and last week we learned that number was even higher, 87 million Facebook users who had their private information taken without their consent. Was it private? I don't actually know if that's true. Specifically, using a personality quiz he created, Professor Kogan collected the personal information of 300,000 Facebook users and then collected data on millions of their friends. It appears the information collected included everything these individuals had on their Facebook pages, and according to some reports, even included private direct messages between users. That's interesting. Uh, maybe stop taking online quizzes, guys. <clears throat> like, stop doing that. That warning screen that comes up that says that you're giving them access to all of your personal data. Don't do that. I know you really want to find out which Frozen character you most resemble, but just throw a dart at a board. Professor Kogan is said to have taken data from over 70 million Americans. It has also been reported that he sold this data to Cambridge Analytica for $800,000. Good job, buddy. That's, that's the entrepreneurial spirit we're looking for. Cambridge Analytica then took this data and created a psychological warfare tool to influence the United States elections. <laughs> In fact, the CEO, Alexander Nix, declared that Cambridge Analytica ran all the digital campaign, the television campaign, and its data informed all the strategy for the Trump campaign. Dun, dun, dun. All of it. All of it. The reporting has also speculated that Cambridge Analytica worked with the Internet Research Agency... The reporting has also speculated that Cambridge Analytica worked with the Internet Research Agency to help Russian, Russia identify which American voters target with, it, which it's, with its propaganda. If I'm not mistaken, uh, so far, the IRA activity has amounted to 250,000 Americans um, seeing the particular ads over, you know, over all of the states. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. That's the number that I had heard earlier. So, uh, <laughs> seeing an ad and being influenced by an ad are a couple different things. And, uh, we spend a lot of money influencing other elections. Ask, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu how fun it was to run against the Obama campaign. I'm concerned that press reports indicate Facebook learned about this breach in 2015, but appears not to have taken significant steps to address it until this year. <laughs> Are you telling me that by not reading the adhesion contract, I'm so signing over all my private info? Yes. And without online quizzes, how will Maddox ever get to feel smart? I mean, we know he can't take the actual tests. Ooh. It has also led to CNN harassing Florida residents. And someone on Facebook told me it was like 4 billion ads. <laughs> So this hearing, uh, I'm concerned that press reports indicate Facebook learned about this breach in 2015, but appears not to have taken significant steps to address it until this year. So this hearing is important. It is. It is important. And I appreciate the conversation we had yesterday, and I believe that Facebook, through your presence here today and the words you're about to tell us, will indicate how strongly your industry will regulate and or reform the platforms that they control. Regulate, reform, control. Listen to the words of Diane Feinstein because she just explained her entire ethos and the scumbags in Congress just like her regulate, reform, control. Hey, Congress, eat a cinder block. I believe this is extraordinarily important. You lead a big company with 27,000 employees and we very much look forward to your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now we get to Chuck Grassley. Yeah, break out the liquor, buddy. But it, either way. Uh, thank you, Senator Feinstein. The history and growth of Facebook mirrors that of many of our technological giants. Founded by Mr. Zuckerberg in 2004, Facebook has exploded over the past 14 years. Currently has over 2 billion monthly active users uh, across the world, over 25,000 employees in offices in 13 U.S. cities and various other countries. 
like their expanding uh, user base. Uh, the data collected on Facebook users has also skyrocketed. The H is silent. Cut grassly. There you go. Uh, they have moved on from schools, likes, and relationship statuses. Mm. What does that even mean? Today, Facebook has access to data po of data points ranging from ads that you've clicked on, events you've attended, and your location based upon your mobile device. I mean, I think they always had access to that data. It is no secret that Facebook makes money off this data through advertising revenue, although many seem confused by or altogether unaware of this fact. I think the many confused by or altogether unaware are actually sitting in the room with you right now, you giant idiot. Facebook generates generated $40 billion in revenue in 2017, with about 98% coming from advertising across Facebook and Instagram. The real question is, where's the other 2% coming from? Significant data collection is also occurring at Google, Twitter, Apple, Amazon, and even an, uh, an ever-expanding portfolio of products and services offered by these companies grant endless opportunities to collect increasing amounts of information on their customers. Yeah, yeah, because they want to know how to sell stuff to them. It's this weird thing that American businesses have started doing just in 2017 where they want to sell products to people. Gats, gats. Who's worse, Facebook or Google? No lawyering. Um, mm, right now, I'm going to go with... God, that's a good question. I'm going to go with Google right now. Mainly because Google's actions led to them getting shot up. Frankly. Uh, and, and, and yeah. <laughs> As we get more free or extremely low-cost services, the trade-off for the American consumer is to provide more personal data. Yes, you're selling something that's of value. So guys, uh, I don't know if you know this, but everything is marketing. Everything is marketing. I'm marketing to you right now. Uh, I'm marketing to the broader YouTube community. I'm marketing off of YouTube as well. Uh, I'm marketing to the Patreon community. I'm marketing on Twitter and Facebook constantly. I'm marketing to my friends and family every single day. And so are you. What we're selling may be different uh, and may have different price points. I market my legal services in one way. I market this YouTube channel in a completely different way. But when, when I'm engaging with you guys in the comment sections and when we're doing these live streams and I get to interact with you, like that's marketing and it's great. I love it. You are freely giving me information. Right now I'm Facebook and I'm assessing this. I could, uh, you know, spend lots of time and money going through all of the chats and, uh, and, and develop a marketing plan. And this is sounding like more and more of a good idea. And, uh, <laughs> and find out what people are, what, what resonates really well with people. And I certainly watch view counts to try and figure that out and, and to see how I can expand my voice in the community. Certainly. It's all marketing. It's constant, constant, constant marketing. This is not new. This has never been new. <laughs> it was, it was not new when America was created. It's never been new. Everyone is trying to sell something because we live in a capitalist society. And I know the commies in Congress, yes, even the right, uh, want to have this weird society where no one ever markets anything and everyone just buys what Congress tells them, but that's not how it works. So if you don't know, yes, all of these companies are happy to take something that is of value to them and actually of comparatively little value to you to the point where you're willing to just give it to them. You're willing to go on Facebook and post everywhere you go. I post pictures of just about every donut I eat when I go to Texas because I freaking love donuts and I want Minnesota to do more donuts. Uh, but I do that willingly knowing that that Facebook is going to then show me a bunch of pictures of donuts and Shipley's ads, and I'm going to smash my head into the wall because I can't eat them, okay? Yeah, I'm creeping on you. Sorry. But only in ways in which you voluntarily give me information. But we all do this. Everybody does this. You do it when you respond to people on your own Facebook and Twitter accounts. You're marketing as well because you're taking uh, stock of what people react to. You're, you're, calculating how they reacted and how you're going to deliver your next message, whatever your aim may be. That's, that's just marketing. They're just doing it on massive scales with all of the data that's given to them. <laughs> I don't want your metadata. I really don't. And, and metadata should be protected in all honesty. It should be metadata is not freely given knowledgeably by the vast majority of consumers. And, and we can, we can talk to that. Landry does donuts every single time he gets behind the wheel of a car. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. As we get more free or extremely low cost services, a trade off for the American consumer, consumers to provide more personal data. The potential for further growth and innovation based on da- collection of data is unlimited list. Unlimited list. However, the potential for abuse is also significant, but it is limited list, apparently. Not unlimited list. While the contours of the Cambridge Analytica situation are still coming to light, there is clearly a breach of consumer trust and a likely improper transfer of data. The Judiciary Committee will hold a separate hearing exploring Cambridge and other data privacy issues. More importantly, though, these events have ignited a larger discussion on consumers' expectations and the future of data privacy in our society. What data privacy? Like, you freaking liars. I'm... mm, You guys established the FISA court and you love it and you re-endorse it every time and you do the Patriot Act. What data privacy do we have? You just don't want other people to have it. Fascist piles of trash. It is exposed that consumers may not fully understand or appreciate the extent to which their data is collected, protected, transferred, uh, used, and misused. Like kind of how you will use the cell phone towers that we uh, <laughs> we use, that our phone pings without our knowledge to try and establish patterns of behavior to see if we're engaging in various activities. Get bent, fat coward. Data has been used in advertising and political campaigns for decades. Yes, I body shamed him. The amount and type of data obtained, however, has seen a very dramatic change. Campaigns including President Bush, Obama, and Trump all use these increasing amounts of data to focus on micro-targeting and personalization over numerous social media platforms and especially Facebook. In fact, presidents, Obama's campaign developed an app utilizing the same Facebook feature as Cambridge Analytica to capture the information uh, of not just the app's users, but millions of their friends. So that's a joust back to Feinstein's uh, hilariously one-sided view of that situation. The digital director for that campaign for 2012 described the data scraping app as something that would, quote, wind up being the most groundbreaking piece of technology developed for this campaign, end of quote. So the effectiveness of the social media tactics can be debated, but their use over the past years across the political spectrum and their increased significance cannot be ignored. Our policy towards data privacy and security must keep pace with these changes. Data privacy should be tethered to consumer needs and expectations, now at a minimum. Consumers must have the transparency necessary to make an informed decision about whether to share their data and how it can be used. Consumers ought to have clearer information, not opaque policies, and complex click-through consent pages. Uh, (laughs) They're not going to read the clearer information because it's an 80-page online document. (sighs) Grassley, have you ever read an end-user license agreement? No. No, you haven't. The only guy who read it was the guy who wrote it. That's Lior. (laughs) Only Lior has read EULAs. The tech industry has an obligation to respond to widespread and growing concerns over data privacy and security and to restore the public's trust. The status quo no longer works. Why not? (laughs) I mean, what, what about it doesn't work? It's working very effectively. You just disagree with how it's working. That's a different thing. Moreover, uh, Congress, I don't, uh, Esloquehe, uh, I don't know much about the Channel Awesome stuff, so I'm, I'm not going to discuss it. But if you have some information, send it to me. I'd be happy to review it and uh, consider it for a upcoming video. Um, but I just don't know enough about it to, uh, to talk about. So I don't want to misrepresent anything. Um, Congress must determine if and how we need to strengthen privacy standards to ensure transparency and understanding for the billions of consumers who utilize these products. Senator Nelson, uh, why doesn't Congress um, go ahead and and ensure transparency for the millions of Americans whose data they take every day, every single day through the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act? You know, that, that thing that you tried to deny the existence of until one guy who you're trying to, you know, uh, arrest, Edward Snowden, released all the information to America and then suddenly you started rolling it back when you realized that maybe they don't like the fact that they're being spied on by a bunch of dummies in Congress. Mm, kind of hate you guys. Let me just cut to the chase. This is Bill Nelson, Democrat from Florida. <laughs> so watch out. Florida men are dangerous. I, I have learned from the news. 
Let me just cut to the chase. If you and other social media companies do not get your act in order, li listen to dad go. None of us are going to have any privacy anymore. Oh, that's sweet. That's what we're facing. We're talking about personally identifiable information that if not kept by the social media, media companies from theft, a value that we have in America being our personal privacy, not theft, just so he clarified that. We won't have it anymore. It's the advent of technology. Uh, <laughs> and of course, all of us are part of it. No, you're a part of it. You're specifically a part of it because you're demanding access to this data. You're demanding backdoor access to all of this data from these companies, you lying, stupid coward. Oh, I just... I hate Congress. I don't know if you guys know this. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. From the moment that we wake up in the morning until we go to bed, we're on those handheld tablets. And government is tracking our individual or our, in, our activities and collecting information. Just take out companies like Facebook because it's government that's doing it also. And companies like Facebook have our consent. The government does not. And they're demanding access to have, they're demanding to have access to that information without our consent and not even without our consent, but without our knowledge. Constantly, constantly demanding that. At least Facebook lets you know that they're doing it. Pointless grandstanding is the point of Congress. Yeah, absolutely. Cut Grassley is 84. Wow. Ugh. He'll probably be eating dirt before anything happens on this. Facebook has a responsibility to protect this personal information. We had a good discussion yesterday. We went all over this, over all of this. You told me that the company had failed to do so. Uh, he just doxed Zuckerberg. Good job. It's not the first time that Facebook has mishandled its users' information. And I know he didn't dox him, okay? This is a joke. It's a joke about people's misunderstanding of doxing, okay? Specifically, the uh, TDS administrators. <laughs> they posted a private conversation. It's doxing. It's not the first time that Facebook has mishandled its users' information. The FTC found that Facebook's privacy policies had deceived users in the past. And in the present case, we recognize that Cambridge Analytica and an app developer lied to consumers and lied to you, lied to Facebook. Yeah, they did. <laughs> so, uh. But did Facebook watch over the operations? We want to know that. <laughs> Why didn't Facebook notify 87 million users that their personally identifiable information had been taken? And it was also being used. Why were they not informed for unauthorized political purposes? So only now, and I appreciate our conversation, only now Facebook has pledged to inform those consumers whose accounts were compromised. Maybe because if they went ahead and started informing people, they'd open themselves up to tort liability uh, for, for that data breach. And they might not have been entirely sure how that data breach occurred, what the scope of it was. And these questions, uh, the questions of what's taken in a breach and how the breach occurred are really giant questions that your party, right? The Democrats, the DNC can't even answer conclusively in regards to the 2016 election. Uh, why haven't you guys talked about how that actually took place? Right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So, okay. So only now, and I appreciate our conversation, only now Facebook has pledged to inform those consumers whose accounts were compromised. I think you are genuine. Uh, I got the sense in conversing with you. Remember how, how Bush got just reamed for looking into Putin's eyes lovingly? and sensing his soul. <laughs> uh, you want to do the right thing. You want to enact reforms. We want to know if it's going to be enough. And I hope that it will, that will be the, in the answers today. Now, since we still don't understand what Cambridge Analytica has done with this data, you don't understand what data it is because I'm pretty sure you operate solely on legal pads at this point. You heard Chairman Thune say, as we have discussed, we want to haul Cambridge Analytica in to answer these questions at a separate hearing. I want to thank Chairman Thune for working with all of us on scheduling a hearing. There's obviously a great deal of interest in this subject. I hope we can get to the bottom of this. And if Facebook and other online companies will not or cannot fix the privacy invasions, then we're going to have to. We, the Congress. How can American consumers... Trust folks like your company to be caretakers of their most personal and identifiable information. And that's the question. Because they do every day. Like, how can they? They do willingly and happily trust Facebook. And they post the dumbest things. Constantly. Like, that's just... Privacy. 
We want privacy from government. We want privacy from government. That's that's the foundational privacy that's in our founding documents. We also want privacy from, you know, companies. But when we engage with those companies, we willingly shed some of that. Diane Feinstein is 84. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Guys, these people grew up without TVs. Thank you, my colleagues and Senator Nelson. Our witness today is Mark Zuckerberg, founder, chairman, chief executive officer. Okay, blah, blah, blah. We know who Zucker, Zuckerberg, Cuckerberg is. Uh, let's get to his opening statement, and then that'll be the end of the opening statements. And then we're going to video. Like I said, feel free to derail this. <laughs> chairman Grassley, Thune, ranking member Feinstein, ranking member Nelson, and the members of the committee. We face a number of important issues around privacy, safety, and democracy, and you will rightly have had some hard question have some hard questions for me to answer. Before I talk about the steps we're taking to address them, I want to talk about how we got here. Facebook is an idealistic and optimistic company. For most of our existence, we focused on all of the good that connecting people can do, and as Facebook has grown, people everywhere have gotten a powerful new tool for staying connected to the people they love, for making their voices heard, and for building communities and businesses. Do you expect any developments in the lawsuit between now and the hearing? I don't expect any, no. Uh, there could be some. I just don't expect it. Uh, you've got oral arguments next week, and the two law students are reading your briefs right now. Okay, later, buddy. That's fine. Abandon me. It's okay. I know what you're saying, but I hate Facebook and social media is mostly a blight. It was a lot better when people were taught to hide who you were and not spread it like a cancer. Yeah, and that's a valid opinion. Absolutely a valid, valid, valid opinion. Valid, valid. Cockerberg misspelled ideological. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, good luck with your oral arguments, by the way. Let's talk about that on Discord. You'll always be here. Except, aren't you leaving? Like, didn't that what you just said? Is this... Is, this the government telling Facebook that if they don't do something about protecting our privacy, they will demand our private data from them so they can do something? Yes. Yes. That's what it is. All right. Uh, let's see. Just recently, we've seen the Me Too movement and the March of Our Lives organized. So that lays out, by the way, what good Facebook is talking about. And they have a particular ideological uh, bent. They, they, they do. No doubt about it. And that will come up in just a second. Uh, at least in part on Facebook, after Hurricane Harvey, people came together to raise more than $20 million for relief. More than 70 million businesses, small businesses, use Facebook to create jobs and grow. I'm here tonight. I'm just watching them mark up your brief. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Good. Uh, but it's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm and <laughs> as well. So who's preventing the tools in Congress being used for harm? And that goes for fake news for foreign interference in elections and hate speech, as well as developers and data privacy. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake, and it was my mistake. And I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. So now we have to go through our all of our relationships with people and make sure that we're taking a broad enough view of our responsibility. That word is dangerous, by the way. Responsibility is a dangerous word. Is Zuck saying that he is responsible for the independent good actions of others? Yes. <laughs> it's not enough to just connect people. We have to make sure those connections are positive. No, you don't. Stop it. Bad Zuckerberg. It's not enough to just give people a voice. We need to make sure that people aren't using it to harm other people or spread misinformation. No, you don't. And it's not enough to just give people control over their information. We need to make sure that the developers they share it with protect their information too. Yes, that is your actual responsibility. Uh, there are lots of laws around that and regulations which you need to comply with. That is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, is it a reasonable person's responsibility to understand everything in an end user license agreement, indemnity clauses, for example? Um, yes, legally it is. It is, unfortunately. Uh, and, and end user license agreements are absurdly complex. This is the death camp of tolerance where intolerance will not be to tolerated. <laughs> Across the board, we have a responsibility to not just build tools, but to make sure they're used for good. No, you, no, you don't. No, you don't. Don't accept that. Zuckerberg, 
Let me give you legal advice. Follow the Remington, the Winchesters, the Smith & Wessons. You do not have a responsibility to make sure your tools are used for good. If you accept that responsibility, you accept liability for when they're used for bad. And you don't have that responsibility. Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't take it. It will take some time to work through the, all the changes we need to make across the company, but I'm committed to getting this right. This includes the basic responsibility of protecting people's information, which we failed to do with Cambridge Analytica. So here are a few things we're doing to address this and to prevent it from happening again. First, we're getting to the bottom of exactly what Cambridge Analytica did and telling everyone affected. Uh, what we know is that Cambridge Analytica improperly accessed some information about millions of Facebook users by buying it from an app developer. That information, this was information that people generally share publicly on their Facebook pages, like names in their profile picture and the pages that they follow. Then how is that improperly obtained? Like in all honesty, how is that improperly obtained? I'm wondering if he means because Facebook has the license to that data and not that it was improperly obtained because it was improperly purchased. When we first contacted Cambridge Analytica, they told us they had deleted the data. About a month ago, we heard reports that suggested that wasn't true, and now we're working with governments in the US, the UK, and around the world to do a full audit of what they've done and to make sure they get rid of any data they may still have. Uh, second, to make sure no other app developers are out there misusing data, we're now investigating every single app that had access to large amounts of information in the past. And if we find that someone improperly used data, we're going to ban them from Facebook and tell everyone affected. Third, to prevent this from ever happening again and going forward, we're going to make sure that developers can't access as much information now. The good news here is that we've already made big changes to our platform in 2014 that would have prevented this specific situation with Cambridge Analytica from occurring again today. Uh, <laughs> but there's more to do. But I thought Cambridge Analytica used this data to run Trump's election. Uh, there's more to do and you can find more details in the steps we're taking in my written statement. My top priority has always been our social mission of connecting people, building community, and bringing the world closer together. Advertisers and developers will take priority over that as long as I'm... Uh, will never take priority over that as long as I'm running Facebook. Uh, I started Facebook when I was in college. We've come a long way since then. We now serve more than 2 billion people. And every day people use our services to stay connected with the people that matter to them the most. Guys, uh, Congress gave Mark Zuckerberg the largest ad in history for free. Good job. I believe deeply in what we are doing. And I know that when we address these challenges, we'll look back and view helping people connect and giving more people a voice uh, as a positive force in the world. Realize the issues we're talking about today aren't just issues for the Facebook in our community. They're issues challenging... Uh, challenges for all of us as Americans. Thank you for having me here today. I'm ready to take your questions. Uh, okay, and then Grassley has a bad, a stupid gaff that people laugh at because there's nothing to laugh at in Congress. So stupid gaffs are the funniest things. Good job. Good job. All right. So let's, uh, let's see what we've got here. Um, I just want to remind you guys, this is a human. This is not a robot. So he says. So that that's the face of a human being. Uh, just a second before we get into this. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go get a drink. And by go get a drink, I mean, I'm going to grab a drink. What do I want? Uh, I think. Someone was mentioning brandy earlier, and I got this Armagnac. And I think I'm going to go into some Armagnac. Mmm. 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 So I also like brandy, by the way. Uh, okay. Set this down. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, she's a fine girl. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Clay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, Tess has some questions. One, is Facebook liable for the actions of a third party? Uh, they can be. They can be. If they were negligent in allowing access to protected data, they are liable for those actions. 
through negligence, through a negligence cause of action. Um, then did uh, Cambridge Analytica fraudulently claim an improper purpose in negotiating its contract? I have no idea. And is Cambridge Analytica liable for the ultimate breach if it is one of Facebook user data? Yes. Uh, Cambridge Analytica would be liable for their actions if they are specifically not legal. And then um, Facebook would be liable in tort for negligence actions as well. Hopefully that addresses those. So should we start this video? Now, uh, I, you know, I stole these videos from various YouTube sources. Uh, this one is from Bloomberg. Um, we're going to comment on them, so uh, hopefully extensively. So they should be fair use. And they stole them from C-SPAN anyway. Just kidding. All right. Let's see what the what the robot has to say. Here we go. Um, oh, I should probably... Hold on. I apologize. I'm going to put on headphones. Otherwise, there's going to be a nasty echo, and I don't want to do that to you guys. Because I love you. Even if I don't love wearing headphones while I live stream, because it makes my ears hot. All right, hold on. One second here. Let's... Uh... There we go. Whoops. Terrible at this. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, without further ado, let's get to some questioning. Do robots have rights? Not yet. Not yet, but that's coming, right? That's every sci-fi movie ever made. Not ever made, but recently. Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many... First commentary. This is obviously Ted Cruz's questioning, uh, and I thought... <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, let's... Um, this is an interesting... This was the most interesting testimony that I've heard so far. Or not testimony, questioning back and forth. This is not related to the privacy issue, and this is why... This is the main reason I wanted to bring this up. Okay, so this is Ted Cruz, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go into this here. And I'll also talk about uh, an online spat I had as a result of this. Americans, who I think are... Whoop! That was good. Right there. Uh, solid job, Nick. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, what, what happened to the... Okay. Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that, that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news, including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about the Lois Lerner IRS scandal, including stories about Glenn Beck. In addition, Don't disparage the good name of Glenn Beck. <laughs> Nicholas Allen, super chat. Your drink is the drink that will pierce the heavens. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Mm. Mm. And that is good. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a very good uh, brandy that someone sent me. Um, I think I talked about it before. The name is eluding me right now. I really apologize, uh, Lara Single. I don't, I'm not going to go into the French of that, but Armagnac, uh, very good brandy. Strongly recommend, uh, especially if whiskey's a little harsh for you, I would, I would give that. No, Gizmodo is not important enough for anything. My night started out with just one drink, then it became multiple drinks, and then my night ended when being asked to leave a Chipotle for stealing hot sauce bottles. <laughs> don't try to restore the broken name of Gen Glenn Beck. Yeah, uh, Glenn is... Glenn was riding high, and then uh, maybe he should have collected some Facebook data to uh, keep his keep his name going. In addition to that, Facebook has initially shut down the Chick Fil A Appreciation Day <laughs> page, has blocked a post of a Fox News reporter, not a Fox has News reporter, over two dozen Catholic pages, and most recent. How dare you? How dare you, Zuckerberg? That's, you know, that's offensive. You don't block Jesus. Recently blocked Trump supporters Diamond and Silk's page 
with 1.2 million Facebook followers after determining their content and brand were, quote, unsafe to the community. To a great... A question to the chat. Has, has anybody here ever watched, like, Diamond and Silk stuff? I mean, I remember seeing it years ago and thinking, okay. I, I didn't watch it extensively. Is it any good? Or is it just ridiculous? My thought is it's probably the latter. But uh, you guys tell me. Many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Do you agree with that assessment? Well, no, of course he's not going to agree with that assessment. <laughs> Let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from. Be because my algorithms tell me how to respond. Because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. And uh, I, this is actually a concern. Zephael, yes. Yes, I would concern that I have and that I try to root out the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern that, um, that people would, so, would, so would me, at least me, wonder about. Let me ask this now, question. Are, are you aware of any ad or page that has been taken down from Planned Parenthood? Senator, I, I'm, I'm not, but let me just... Uh, can how about I move on finish? org? No, you can't finish. <laughs> the senator has some questions. Sorry? How about moveon.org? I'm not specifically aware of those. How about cases. any Democratic candidate for office? I, I'm not specifically aware. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm... Wait, did, so, did someone say Kermit the Frog? I'm not specifically aware. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of any pages being taken down at this point in time. I'm not sure. In your testimony, you say that you have 15 to 20,000 people working on security and content review. Do you know the political orientation of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review? Uh, no, Senator. We do not generally ask people about their political orientation when they're joining the company. So as CEO... Have <laughs> the Vinzini voice is, is difficult, man. I've been, I've been working on it, and it's not ready. But I promise I am working on it. Uh, it's, it's tough, because I have to scream it. So we're working on it. Have you ever made hiring or firing decisions based on political positions or what candidates they supported? No. Uh, no, Mr. Cruz, that would be um, illegal under California law. Please see Damore versus Google. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? Guys, did you see that? Hold on. Let's go back. Watch him poop in real time. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? Poop. That is a specific <laughs> personnel matter that seems... Oh, my VLC has gone just great. Seems like it would be inappropriate to You just made to a here. specific representation that you didn't make decisions based on political views. Well, is that I, can, I can commit that... It, it was not because of a political view. Do you know of those 15 to 20,000... <laughs> my VLC is not happy with the pausing and restopping or something. Uh, Adam D says, it's sad to see a lawyer like Cruz uh, deliberating using ridiculous lines of questioning just because it will work for fundraising letters to the faithful. Actually, um, give Cruz a minute here because uh, he's, he's doing something. He's acting, in, in a, he's acting as a litigator in a great way. He really is uh, acting in a, in a this is a good line of questioning, uh, so bear with him for a second. People engaged in content review. How many, if any, have ever supported financially a Republican candidate for office? Senator, I do not. Oh, my gosh. VLC is killing me. I know that. <laughs> Your testimony says it is not enough that we just. <laughs> Let me reload the stream because <laughs> this, is, this is a disaster. Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans Hold on, I'll, I'll go who back I to think spot, are deeply concerned that, that Facebook. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's loading. It's catching up. It's catching up. Here we go. 
exciting. All right. He says. This is the smoothest playback I've ever seen. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Um. Okay. If this doesn't work in just a second, I have an alternate way to look at these videos. It is not enough that we just... Yep. <laughs> okay. Let's just kill it. Let's kill it. Uh, let's see. Give me just a second here. We're going to fix the window on the fly. Uh... Mm. Mm -mm. Let's see. Browser. How many data categories do you store? Whoa, does Facebook that's store the wrong one. On the categories that you collect. Hold on. Senator, can you clarify what you mean by data well, there's, categories? There's some past oh, come reports on. that have been Here out there that this is the window I need. That, it, that Facebook collects. A okay, just a second. Sorry about that. Uh... Oh, just a minute. So bad at this. Sorry, guys. Almost there. Uh, here we go. Thanks for bearing with me on this. I'm always prepared for things to break in real time. How many data no, categories? go away. Catch fire. Uh, all right. So here we go. Properties. Finally, someone Oh, an me. ad. That's great. Free ads. With Wix Artificial Design Intelligence. How broadly I think about this. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great right, many go. Americans who I think are deeply... Senator, I do not know that. Your testimony says it is not enough that we just connect people. We have to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Lucifer Love Monkey says, I just wanted to say Iron Maiden does not collect your data. Eddie only wants souls. <laughs> and uh, Judicious Echo says, use SM player and stop being VLC's cuck. Well, I, you know, this is the, uh, this is the first time I've, well, not the first time. The Sovereign Citizen, I just use a YouTube player. So I was hoping to do it without all the YouTube crap around it without the ads, but uh, we'll just have to deal with it. I apologize. So here we go. Try YouTube TV for free, guys. We have to make sure those connections are positive. It says we have to make sure people aren't using their voice to hurt people or spread misinformation. We have a responsibility not just to build tools, to make sure those tools are used for good. Mr. Zuckerberg, do you feel it's your responsibility to assess users, whether they are good and positive connections or ones that those 15 to 20,000 people deem unacceptable or deplorable? Senator, you're asking. Note the subtle inclusion of deplorable there. But here's, here's what Cruz is doing. He's setting up, uh, he's setting up Zuckerberg in a in a trap it's a litigation tactic where he's going to get him to make some representations about things and then he's going to uh show him why he's not correct asking about me personally facebook uh, senator i think that there are a number of things that we would all agree are clearly bad foreign interference in our elections terrorism uh self-harm those are about a bit presumptuous by the way to say that we should all agree that these are clearly bad uh i don't agree that all of these things are clearly bad. Foreign interference in, in elections is a strong point. What, what, I, this might be unpopular, but what about foreign governments or foreign entities uh, disqualifies them from having an opinion in a country that tries to police the entire globe? Like what, where is that a thing? Uh, how does that work? <laughs> 
<laughs> Zuck is going to die in seven days. The Zodiac Killer's on to you, Zuck. You're toast. Uh, but yeah, where where is that? Um, why do they not have a voice? Uh, in fact, the First Amendment uh, rights of, of foreign entities have been upheld over and over again. Over and over again. About Things? censorship. Uh, well... I think that you would probably agree that we should remove terrorist propaganda from the service. So that, I, I agree, uh, I think is, is clearly bad activity that we wanted. Probably, maybe, clearly bad. I don't know. Get down, and we're generally proud of, of how well we, we do with that. Yeah. Now, what I can say, and, and, I, and I do want to get this in before the end here, is that I am, I am very committed to making sure that... Jihadis, free legal vice. Don't say Allahu Akbar in your videos if you don't want to take them down. The algorithm will get you. Facebook is a platform for all ideas. That is a, a very important founding principle of, of what we do. Uh, we're proud of the discourse and the different ideas that people can share on the service. And that is something that as long as I'm running the company, I'm going to be committed to making sure is the case. Thank you. Okay, I went too far, I guess, right? Why was Palmer Lucky fired? Oh, here we go. This is where I left off. That is a specific personnel matter that seems like it would be inappropriate to You speak just made a specific here. representation that you didn't make decisions based on political views. Well, is that I, can, I can commit that it was not because of a political view. Do you know of those 15 to 20,000 people engaged in content review? Okay. So, uh, pardon my, my ineptitude. <laughs> the next videos will be easier because they'll just be on this platform. But, um... Cruz was setting, setting uh, Zuckerberg up, right, for saying uh, we, we don't do this based on politics. And then he really wanted to stick him on that, uh, the Palmer Lucky, on that Palmer Lucky point. And uh, really, SM Player is a workhorse and has YouTube support. Well, I'll, I'll certainly look into it, uh, not on this stream. So thanks for the, thanks for the tip. Um, you don't want to see me try and act... <laughs> assess a technology on the fly. Uh, as you can tell, it's, it's a disaster. But, um, so, you know, Cruz's goal there was to, uh, you know, peg, peg Zuckerberg on the idea that Facebook is not, Facebook is not neutral. And th this is, there's actually more to his testimony that's ticking me off. Hold on one second. Let me find it. Um, because this is, uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, does Facebook consider its... Okay, hold on. I'm going to pull up this video real quick. And uh, we'll, we'll get that going. This is important. Mr. Zuckerberg, does Facebook consider itself a neutral public forum? Senator, we consider ourselves to be a platform for all ideas. Let me ask the question again. Does Facebook consider itself to be a neutral public forum? And representatives of your company have given conflicting answers on this. Are, are you a First well, Amendment speaker expressing your views, or are you a neutral public forum allowing everyone to speak? This is an important question. Now, if you read, uh, this is why you never get your news about the law from a non-lawyer. But if you read TechBit, they did a blog about this in which they got pedantic over Ted Cruz's use of neutral public forum, stating that that's not in the statute, which is true. It is not in the statute that they have to be a neutral public forum. However, the statute does require that any takedowns made by Facebook are done in good faith. And the good faith takedown uh, starts to erode very quickly when it's specific towards one political uh, party or one, politi one particular ideology. So um, that's that's where this is. This is the whole point of the video I was after. So I, I grabbed the wrong one. So you should probably drink like a hundred times for my screw up. But yeah, uh, Senator, here's how we think about this. I don't believe that. Uh, Who's we? There is certain content that clearly we do not allow, right? H hate speech, terrorist content, um, nudity, anything that makes people feel unsafe in in the community. Nudity doesn't make me feel unsafe. Cuck. Um, from that perspective, that's why we generally try to refer to what we do as a platform yeah, let, for let all ideas. Let me ideas. try just because the time is constrained. It's just a, a simple question. The predicate for, for Section 230 immunity under the CB, CDA is that you are a neutral public forum. Do you consider yourself a neutral public forum or are you engaged in political speech, which is your right under the First Amendment? Well, Senator, our goal is certainly not to engage in political speech. 
I'm not that familiar with- Ha! Ha! Look at that lady's face! Look at her face! She knows he's lying! Our goal is not to engage in political speech. Really? Really, Zuckerberg? You're gonna hold that up? <laughs> Law 44 UK, uh, good morning. Good morning to you too. Um, like, come on. Come on, buddy. Of course you're engaging in political speech. Everybody does. Everybody engages in political speech. It's unavoidable. Stop it. The specific legal language of the, the law that you, that you speak to. So he is familiar, by the way. He has been sued and claimed this law as immunity. He has, not Facebook. Zuckerberg has, has been sued and claimed two thir Section 230A as immunity. Uh, from for his actions or for Facebook's actions. Facebook has been sued. There are like nine appeals court cases. He should be familiar with this, but um, he's dodging the question here. Is he supposed to be under oath? Uh, that's a really good question because he's not. He's not under oath here. And that's what happens when you're a billionaire in control of one of the largest media companies on the planet is that you you don't show up to Congress without being un or being under oath, right? I'm sure he negotiated that. I'm not going to talk under oath as CEO. I'm going to come out and apologize and market Facebook to the to the American public. Uh, but I'm not going to be under oath. Um, being under oath or not, I mean, it, it immunizes him from perjury, but it doesn't necessarily immunize him from being impeached on his... Uh, impeached not in the terms of, like, the, the legal impeachment process for a president or something like that, but impeached in saying that his testimony, uh, he said one thing and, and then a different statement contradicts what he said. So I, I would need to follow up with you on that. I'm just trying to lay out how broadly I... And I need to follow up you, with you on that is the reason that these congressional hearings are always a joke is because everyone needs to follow up and we never see the follow up. You will never... I, man, I would love to see a follow up ever happen. I think about this. Well, Mr. Zuckerberg, I will say there are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that... They okay, and that, that's where we started off with the other video. So, uh, Cruz's video is an absolute disaster for me, so I apologize for that. Let's move on to Ben Sass, And don't worry, I don't have just Republicans. We have the other dummies on there, too. Republicans being dummies. Make no mistake. Uh, I am I'm bipartisan in my despise of these people. I like Chris Coons a lot uh, with his own family or with Dan Sullivan's family. Both are great photos. I'm so glad. Uh, but Benson. I want to ask a Thank similar you. set of questions from the other side, maybe. Uh, I think the, the line, the conceptual line between mere tech company, mere tools, and an actual content company, I think it's really hard. I think you guys have a hard challenge. I think regulation over time will have a hard challenge. He said it's really hard. Um, and you're a private company, so you can make policies uh, that may be uh, less than First Amendment. Uh, Derek, it, it wasn't a failed trap. Um, Zuckerberg made a specific representation that uh, that they don't hire, make employment decisions based on political motivation and that they don't make uh, content decisions based on political motivation. And it, it's probably less clear because of uh, the way I handled the video. But he goes on to point out the specific uh, left-leaning bias of, of Facebook. And it is there. And it absolutely is there. And, and uh, trust me, Zuckerberg's answers on some of these questions and, and on the questions that Ben Sass is asking here, his answers potentially open Facebook up to significant liability. Um, if I would suspect that Cruz accomplished exactly what he was going for. If nothing else, it was to get his AI system to reboot midstream. Yeah, Adam D, I know nobody reads them. That's the point. Like, and, and if I'm not reading them, and because I'm a nerd, right? I, I suspect very few people are actually reading reading them. Uh, like you said, nobody reads them. Um, yeah. Let's see them on C-SPAN. Let's see the person hauled back in to actually provide an update to the American people that they'll watch. 
right, meant man. full spirit embracing, in my view. But I worry about that. I worry about a world where when you go from violent groups to hate speech in a hurry, in one of your responses to one of the opening questions, um, you may decide, or Facebook may decide, it needs to police a whole bunch of speech um, that I think America might be better Oops. off not having policed by one company that has a really big and powerful platform. Can and a specific political ideological bias. Like, that's the other point. Stop policing speech. Stop policing speech. Stop policing speech. Can you define hate speech? Senator, I think that this is a really hard question. And I think it's one of the reasons why we struggle with it. There are certain def- Stop struggling. Stop struggling with it. No one can define hate speech. It's not defined properly in law. The closest they've come, by the way, <laughs> law, law news, uh, the closest they've ever come to defining hate speech was actually burning, an, burning a cross on a black family's lawn. That's the closest thing they've come to to defining what is actually hate speech. The rest of it, they, don't, they just don't have it. They don't know what it is because, uh, you know, what, what ticks people off and what offends people is going to be different person to person. So... Um, the only case that has successfully defined and defended hate speech, uh, as a regulatory sort of, uh, setup was to prevent someone from burning crosses on the lawn of a black family. And I mean, that's really specific, but if you go back to Brandenburg versus Ohio, where you have the KKK protesting in public, talking about lynching black people. Uh, that's protected. That's protected speech because they weren't directly inciting violence against a particular individual who was likely to have violence committed upon them imminently from the time of the speech. So hate speech is a cute term. It's cute. It's great. I'm, I'm so glad that they use hate speech all the time, but no one can define it. So Zuckerberg certainly can't. And these private companies need to lay off of it. Because they can't do it. They're not equipped to, de de to determine what hate speech is because Congress can't do it. So if we as the American people through our representatives can't agree on what hate speech is, get out. You're a private company. Stop trying to police it. Because every time you do, you look like an idiot. And yes, it is terrifyingly Orwellian. Absolutely. Whoops. Here we go. Definitions that, that, we, that we have around... Um, you know, calling for, for violence or calling for violence isn't hate speech and calling for violence. I'm not entirely sure that should be censored either unless that violence passes the incitement test, which means it is imminent violence likely to be committed as a result uh, of, of the speech. Other than that, if I say Congress should eat a cinder block, for example, I don't expect someone to throw a cinder block at Congress. And I don't think any reasonable person listening expects someone to throw a cinder block at Congress based on my words. I'm not calling for violence. It's an, it's an expression. It's an idiom. It's an idiom. Um, there are people who do call for violence actively. Uh, and, and I see, you know, we do see this with certain terrorist groups. But I think that definition might be overly broad, Right. Calling for violence is routinely ignored by Facebook if, if the target is someone Facebook doesn't like. And I, yeah, that's absolutely true. And again, this is the problem with policing speech. What is a call for violence? Well, that's subjective, isn't it? Shouldn't be, but it is. Um, let's just agree on that. If somebody's calling yeah. for violence, we, that shouldn't be there. I'm worried about the psychological categories around speech. You, you used language of safety and protection earlier. We see this happening on college campuses all across the country. It's dangerous. 40% of Americans under age 35 tell pollsters they think the First Amendment is dangerous because you might use... This is why we need a purge of the youth. <laughs> Sorry. Use your freedom to say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. Guess what? There are some really passionately held views about the abortion issue on this panel today. Can you imagine a world uh, where you might decide that pro-lifers are prohibited from speaking about their abortion views on your content, on your platform? And if you can't imagine this world, you're a lying idiot. I certainly would not want that to be the case. But it, it might really be. That's not an answer. Can you imagine that world? You absolutely can. You absolutely can. Unsettling to people who've had an abortion to have an open debate about that, wouldn't it? It might be, but I don't think that that would. 
would fit any of the definitions of, of, of what we have. But I do generally agree with the point that you're making, which is as, we sh as we're able to technologically shift. What he's about to say is the scariest thing I think he says in answer to any of these questions. Towards especially having AI proactively look at content. I think that that's going to create massive questions for society about what obligations we want to require companies to, to fulfill. None. 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 None, 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 none. None of the obligations. Whatever you're thinking in your, in your fake algorithm-driven brain, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's AI, the Facebook AI that has taken over your flesh suit, uh, none of them. You don't have an obligation to any of that. Your obligation is to protect user data, period. That's where it really basically stops. Uh. And, and I do think that that's a question no that, basketball jokes uh, screen, we need Andrew. to struggle with as a country because I know other countries are and they're putting laws in place. And I, I think that America needs to uh, figure out and create the set of principles that we want American companies. We did. We did. None of them. None of them. The principles exist. They're in the Constitution. Shall not be infringed. Period. Done. 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 We did it. We did it. We all agree. Shut up. Oh, God, catch fire. Just to operate under. Thanks. I, I wouldn't want you to leave here today and think there's sort of a unified view in the Congress that you should be moving toward policing more and more and more speech. I think thank God for saying that. Don't thank Ben Sass. <laughs> God put that idea in his mind. I think violence has no place on your platform. Uh, sex traffickers and human traffickers have no place on your platform. But vigorous debates, adults need to engage in vigorous debates. I, I have only a little less than two minutes left, so I want to shift gears a little bit. But that was about adults. Um, you're a dad. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about social media addiction. You started uh, your comments today by talking about how Facebook is and was founded as an optimistic company. Okay, I don't want to hear his comments about social media addiction because they're really not relevant. Uh, it's not Facebook's job. It's not Facebook's job to police children. It's the parents' job to police children. Get over it. And uh, for all of these people, right, who are talking about social media addiction and all that stuff, yeah, it might be a thing, but it might not. You don't actually have the data to, uh, to show it because the data is not old enough. We don't know what it'll do. And I certainly don't want Congress regulating anything based on incomplete data because Lord knows, stop, just stop, just stop, stop regulating, stop regulating things. What's the big deal? Why can't the free market just let a company like Facebook die if they're going to act in a way that consumers don't like? G good freaking question. I don't know. I'm happy to let someone else uh, take over, but that's the problem is what, what happens to Facebook will happen if, if it goes to regulation, it will happen to Gab, it will happen to Mines, it will happen to Twitter. Not that Twitter will complain, or that Twitch will complain, or that Google will complain, but it'll happen to everybody. There will be no competition. We will have this ubiquitous uh, platform that is completely sanitized and neutralized speech. Neutered speech, even. It's just... Mm. Zuck is trying to look non-political, chooses to wear a blue tie. What? <laughs> My children live in a police state. They do. They do. All children live in a police state. Absolutely. All right. Uh, okay. So I'm done with Ben Sass. He did ask some important questions there. And, um, you know, they're, they're good. They're good questions. Uh, Zuckerberg, stop it. Stop it. Stop trying to monitor our speech. Let us ruin ourselves. That's the way, that's the American dream, is to screw your own life up with speech. What do we have Karakilis, with your... This is Richard Blumenthal. Okay. Is it possible to legislate against something that is ill-defined? No, it is not actually possible to do so. There's actually a, uh, a, ju a Supreme Court standard called, uh, well, in regards to First Amendment issues specifically, void for vagueness. Uh, if... If a law is too vague or ill-defined, like literally every hate speech law that's ever been attempted and has come before the Supreme Court, they get void for vagueness because what is actually hate speech? What is it? No one can define it. So these laws get voided because uh, what it always amounts to, 
Hate speech always amounts to what offends me right now. Me is the victim. That's what hate speech always, always, always comes down to in every single case. They don't have a universal identification of what the speech is or what it looks like. Um, same with fighting words. Same with obscenity. Uh, they've pretty much universally agreed that obscenity includes child porn. And that's about it. Other than that, I mean, uh, you know, pornography is not obscenity. No, the, and the level of depravity in that pornography, including, you know, anime and hentai, is, uh, is, is not an acceptable standard of obscenity. So, um, because, because they would rule that it has artistic value. So, uh, and that was, that was a joking jab at anime. Get over it. But uh, they, so no, they cannot... They cannot legislate against something that is ill-defined. They try to. They have tried to all throughout American history, and the Supreme Court has routinely struck them down. Darn is obscenity. <laughs> the virgin European hate speech laws, the Chad Scotus ill-defined smackdown. <laughs> yeah, and we're not even going to talk about European laws on nonsense. Uh, guys, they're, the UK is putting someone potentially in jail for um, a joke. For joke, for jokes, they find people for jokes. So does Canada, my northern neighbor friends. Uh, you don't get out of this. You guys have find people for jokes in the past. For permission, uh, that indicates not only a lack of resources but lack of attention to privacy. And so, my reservation about your testimony today is that. I don't see how you can change your business model unless there are specific rules of the road. Your business model is shut up, shut up. You don't have to, they don't have to change their business model oh, God. to monetize user information, to maximize profit over privacy. Of course they're going to maximize profit over privacy. You commie. And unless there are specific rules and requirements enforced by an outside agency, I have no assurance that these kinds of vague commitments are going to produce action. Dick, can I call you Dick? Die, just die off peacefully, happily, resign and go away and die of old age somewhere. I don't need you. I don't need you. It took a long time for all of us to get away from the protective umbrella of our parents, right? Some people it took, uh, you know, various time, 15 to 30 years, you know, uh, depending on how long you live in your parents' basement. It doesn't matter. We don't need Congress to be mom. We don't. We don't. We have people looking out for us. We grow past them eventually and their protection we value their input we never value your input it's not your job it's not in the constitution seriously get unelected canada is your friend to at least part of it <laughs> canadia yes <laughs> and a brief moment of silence for cadia the planet broke before its people did so i want to ask you a couple of very specific questions and this they are based on legislation that I've offered, the oh, My good. Data Act. That's great. Legislation that Senator Markey is introducing today, the Consent Act, which I'm The Consent joining. Act. Oh, that sounds great. Don't you agree that companies ought to be... Consent Act sounds like an anti-rape thing. So Facebook must be raping us. ...required to provide users with clear, plain information about... Clay, I cannot, re I cannot endorse your irresponsible drinking habits. I just can't, buddy. I'm sorry how their data will be used, and specific ability to consent to the use of that information. Senator, I do generally agree with, with what you're saying. And Stop I it. laid that out earlier when I talked about what... Would you agree to an opt-in as opposed to an opt-out? Um, Senator, I think that that certainly... Um, make sense to discuss, and I think the details around this matter a lot. Which so I'm gonna make a massive business decision for a multi billion dollar company on the fly based on what you're asking, you old fat idiot. He's fat in his head, y'all. 
So agree that users should be able to access all of their information. Senator, yes, of course. Charles Lesko. All of the information that you make, collect. Make as no a mistake. Of Zuckerberg rules purchases us. from data brokers as well as tracking them. Senator, we have already a download your information tool that allows people to see and to take out all of the information that Facebook. Adam D, I agree that it's fathomable, but uh, and and uncensorable, but it doesn't it it doesn't catch the mainstream's attention, uh, and and they always go back. I mean, Twitter, Reddit, uh, 4chan, 8chan, they always go back on being uncensorable. They always do as they achieve more and more um, ad space. They go back on it. Always do. Facebook that they've put into Facebook or that Facebook knows about them. So yes, I agree with that. We already have that. You drink whenever I call you I out. have a number of other clay, clay, specific clay, 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 clay. requests <laughs> that That's a you death agree threat. to support as part of legislation. I think legislation is necessary. The rules of the road. Anyone who says legislation is necessary in any context should be killed. Wow, no land we tonight. This is like watching a holiday episode of a sitcom. <laughs> No, not tonight, buddy. Uh, believe it or not, we have lots of content that does not involve uh, Maddox and Dick Masterson. And, of course, as that lawsuit uh, comes to its inevitable conclusion, we will have more and more. One beer, Clay. It should be one beer per mention. Uh, Ballwinder345. I'm not sure if HN yielded on something yet, but they will. They will. Ultimately, they will have to be the result i am on gab uh by the way follow me on gab the link's in the description result of congressional action uh we have uh facebook has participated recently in the fight against scourge the scourge of sex trafficking and the bill that we've just passed it will be signed into law tomorrow zuckerberg Sesta, almost has a tucker carlson face right now sex trafficking act was the result of our cooperation. I hope that we can cooperate on this kind of measure as well. Thanks. Senator, I look forward to having my team work with you on this. Thank you, Thank Sen you. Senator Blumenthal. Senator Cruz. All right, so that was just before Ted Cruz. Uh, gross. This is, uh, you know, I'm mostly bringing this up to show the political posture of these people. Uh, and, and this goes across both aisles, by the way. I, I hate all of them. I hate all of them. The Do Something Congress is far more damaging to the American people than the do nothing Congress. The do nothing Congress is what was intended. We want the do nothing Congress. Leave us alone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Zuckerberg. Here comes Dick Durbin. I'm sure this will be brilliant. Would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> What a dumb question. You're dumb, Durbin. Whoops. If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Yes, Dick Durbin is obscene. Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. I think that might be what this is all about. Your right to privacy, the limits of your right to privacy, and how much you give away in modern America in the name of, quote, connecting people around the world. Question, basically, of um, what information Facebook's collecting, who they're sending it to, and whether they ever ask me in advance my permission to do that. Is that a fair thing for a user of Facebook to expect? Yes, Senator. I think everyone should have control over how their information is used. And as we've talked about in, in some of the other questions, I think that that is laid out in, in some of the documents, but more importantly, you want to give people control in the product itself. So the most important way that this happens across our services is that... Uh, Adam D. asks a good question. So you agree with Milo's thesis in his interview with Dick that these platforms have erected a barrier to competition without any barrier other than simply having virtually all of the users today? Yes. Um, I'll tell you, when I, I used to work for Wells Fargo long before I was a lawyer, and... Um, uh, they had a motto at the time. It was called go for great. Okay. And going for great meant getting, uh, it was G R eight because you know, that's how 
that's how corporate hacks they work, right? They come up with clever slogans like going for great. But the idea was to get any particular customer of Wells Fargo into eight different products mm -hmm. or services. A checking account would be a product. Uh, a debit card would be a product. Uh, bill pay, for example, would be a product. Okay, so uh, eight different products or services. And they, the, the reason being because their social research found out that once you were in eight products or services, it became far too much work for the average person to extricate themselves from those eight products or services and move to a new company outside of some massive, massive frustration with the, with, with the original company. Make no mistake, Facebook and Twitter have a similar model. Um, it is, you know, all of your contacts are on Facebook. Getting your the people that you care about, even just the people that you agree with to go to an alternative platform is, is nigh impossible. Nigh impossible. Uh, oh, did the stream go down? The stream is back according to my, my end. So hopefully, hopefully it didn't go down too. But, uh, yeah. So the, the idea that these social media companies, they're, they're roping you in to various products and services. They're connecting your friends. They want you to connect your friends to their product because, you know, it's much harder to move to minds if everyone you know is on Facebook. If you're just starting out and you have the freedom of choice uh, with, with no friends and you're going to make all of your friends on social media, then that's a different question. But right now, um, all of your friends are in one place. They're all on Facebook. They're all on Twitter. Uh, so yes, they've they've created an artificial bar, and coming up, uh, we do have a question where where he's asked about monopoly, uh, although the the questioner asks it in the most incompetent way. Uh, catch you later, Sean Thompson. Uh, stay safe, pal. But every day, people come to our services to choose to share photos or send messages, and every single time they choose to share something, um, they they have a control right there about who they want to share it with. But they that level of control is extremely important. They certainly know within the Facebook pages who their friends are, but they may not know, as has happened, and you've conceded this point in the past, that sometimes that information is going way beyond their friends, and sometimes people have made money off of sharing that information. Correct? Senator, you're referring, I think, to our developer platform, um, and it may be useful for me to give some background on how we set that up, if that's useful. I have three minutes left. It may be useful for me to explain to you that the thing that you clearly don't understand. I'm not even convinced that Dick Durbin can spell developer. So maybe you can do that for the record, because I have a couple of the questions I'd like to ask. You have recently announced uh, something that is called um, Messenger Kids. Facebook created... For the children, y'all. Whenever you want to know if Congress is being completely ungenuine and ridiculous, for the children. Uh, Captain K, thanks for hanging out, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for commenting. Comment more. You have a good night, too. You know that Congress is being ridiculous when they bring out the children or the women. You got to protect the children. You got to protect the women. Uh, personal story. I was, uh, I was up at the Minnesota Congress the other day, and... Um, I was talking to uh, someone from the Minnesota Family Council, who's a lobbying group, and they were very proud that they had just gotten struck down um, this uh, this law allowing, or, or they just gotten implemented uh, a law allowing or disallowing online gambling, uh, betting on fantasy sports. Okay, so your fantasy leagues, uh, online betting on fantasy sports. The Minnesota Family Council was really happy that they uh, they they got that uh, they made that illegal uh, to have these online bets on fantasy sports on a daily basis. You can still have your online pools, uh, okay? So you can have a pool where you win if you win the whole season or whatever. But people were making daily bets on the outcomes of fantasy sporting events, and uh, and the Minnesota Family Council came in and struck that down, and they literally said the purpose of striking that down was to protect single mothers who did not have the money to spend on online gambling. So, uh, because as you know, all of the single mothers, you know, what they have absolute time for is, uh, is fantasy sporting events and day betting on family, family sporting event or fantasy sporting events. 
I hate all of these people. An app allowing kids between the ages of 6 and 12 to send video and text messages through Facebook as an extension of their parents' account. You have cartoon-like stickers and other features designed to appeal to little kids, first graders, kindergartners. On January 30th, the Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood and lots of other child development organizations warned Facebook. They pointed to a wealth of research demonstrating that excessive use of digital devices and social media is harmful to kids and argued that young children simply are not ready to handle social media accounts. Shut up. Shut up. You don't have the data. You never have had the data to tell us what we're ready and not ready for. In the 70s, you told us we weren't ready for violence on TV. Shockingly, we have tons of violence on TV and crime has gone down dramatically. Stop it, stop it, stop it. These social busybodies can catch fire. Yes, catch fire. Ugh. Age six. In addition, there are concerns about data that's being gathered about these kids. Now, there are certain limits in the law, we know. But don't let them use it. My kids, who range between six months and ten years old, don't have Facebook accounts. It's a miracle. They don't need one. They don't need one. When they're 13, 14, 15, maybe they'll have one. I don't know. It'll depend on the kid and what's on Facebook. You can stop them. It's cool. There's all sorts of tools for it. Uh, when in history has there been a circumstance like this where some company had major control over culture and politics? Oh, wait, so this is a two-part. I appreciate all of your responses, but think about what uh, Murray Rothbard would probably say to that argument. What makes this moment in history so magical that this phenomenon just now appeared? When in history has there been a circumstance like this where some company had major control over culture and politics that wasn't short-lived? Why now? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, but the other thing, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want Congress deciding that. I don't want Congress deciding any of these answers. I don't want Congress making these answers. If we as a society don't like it, we, we stop purchasing it. But we're not going to because we really like it. No matter how much people are concerned about their data, no matter how much all of these uh, faux outrages come out, faux outrages from congressmen who are marketing votes. And that, at the end of the day, is the most important part of this. These guys are shilling for votes. They don't actually care about any of this. They don't care. They just want votes. Because every act of Congress, and I mean this, I didn't mean this before, uh, as, as thoroughly as I do now, but every single act of Congress is meant to solidify and cement and maintain themselves in power as an elected official with authority over someone else. I don't know why. I don't know why they care so much. I don't have any desire to be in control of someone else's life, but these people do. Everything from, from political contribution, campaign contribution reform, guaranteed to keep these dummies in office with an 11% approval rating and a 95% re-election rating. Every single thing they do is marketed and calculated way more than Facebook. They hire focus groups all the time. The hypocrisy of all of this is nonsensically amazing. Um, I know I'm going way off the rails on your question, but uh, whatever the answer to um, to your question is, I don't want Congress finding the answer. It's not their role, even though they try and take it over and over and over again. It's dumb, but mobile games really do need regulation. I mean, I do it willingly, but I've spent thousands on them. This has never uh, affected me in my livelihood, but some people have. Yeah, it has, uh, but I, d I don't know that they need regulation. I think we need to just stop buying from them. Uh, my kids do not get in-app purchases. They, have, they each have an iPad. They play tons of games with in-app purchases. Um, I tell them no. It's, it's hard sometimes. They really want them. They just don't get them. How many circumcisions is too many circumcisions? I think two, technically. Uh, anyway, let's get back to this. And someone asked how old is Dick Durbin? Uh, too old, period. Get him out. It's a Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. This is a COPA. Good job. Good job citing a law, Dick Durbin. Um, here's the interesting thing about Congress. So initially, right, they had to, they had to be 30 years old uh, to be to be a senator, I believe. I believe 30 is the minimum age for Senate. 
Uh, and if someone wants to embarrass me by proving me wrong, go ahead and do that. But I'm pretty sure that's the answer. Um, 30 year old men at the time that the constitution was written, uh, were about as, you know, they're old. They weren't going to be around forever. Um, life expectancy was what, like 60, something like that. So they might be in for a couple terms and then they'll go away. Now, these idiots keep living so long. We've got to stop it. We've got to stop senators from living so long. And what I mean is we've got to have term limits. We've got to get these guys out after two terms. 12 years is enough. 12 years away from reality is enough. 12 years of being pampered uh, in Senate bathhouses is enough. We don't need them. We don't need them. These, This guy, I don't... Does he know the website for Facebook? Does he know what www stands for? Does he know that dot com means commercial? Like what? What does he know? What guarantees can you give us that no data from messenger kids is or will be collected or shared with those that might violate that law? All right, Senator. So a number of things I think are, are important here. The background on messenger Thanks, kids I is it. we heard feedback from thousands of parents that they want to be able to stay in touch with their kids and call them, use apps like FaceTime um, when they're working late or not around and want to communicate with their kids, but they want to have complete control over that. So I think we can all agree that if you're, when your kid is six or seven, even if they have access to a phone, you want to be able to control everyone who they can contact. There are numerous third-party programs that allow you to do this. Numerous. <sighs> and there wasn't an app out there that did that. So we built this service to do what do you mean there wasn't an app out there that did that? There are tons of apps that do this. I mean, maybe you built it first. I don't know. But there are tons of apps. I can go on my router and put time limits on specific MAC addresses. Uh, that takes a level of, you know, specific skill, but I'm sure there are apps out there that do that as well. Uh, oh, my God. Do that. The app collects a minimum amount of information um, that is necessary to operate the service. So, for example, the messages that people send um, is something that we collect in order to operate the service. But um, in general, that data is not going to be shared with third parties. Um, it is not connected to um, the broader Facebook experience. Excuse me. Hat buckles. How many children does Zuckerberg have? I don't know. I don't know how old they are either. Um, and I'm not sure where they came from because, like I said, I'm pretty sure he is an android that has slipped into the flesh suit where Mark Zuckerberg used to inhabit. I'm pretty sure the internal organs and bones of Mark Zuckerberg have been ground up and placed in ceremonial urns. But, uh, you know, that's just me. Uh, as a lawyer, I picked up on that word in general, the phrase in general. It as seems a to lawyer, suggest that in some circumstances it will. As a lawyer, as a lawyer, I passed the bar in 1941. Get banned. It will be shared with third parties. No, it will not. All right. Um, would you be open to the idea that someone having reached adult age, having grown up with messenger kids, should be allowed to delete the data that you've collected? Someone having... Senator, yes. As a matter of fact, when you become 13, which is our legal limit, our limiter, we, we don't allow people under the age of 13 to use Facebook, um, you don't automatically go from having a Messenger Kids a account to a Facebook account. You have to start over and get a Facebook account. So, um, so I think it's a, it's a good idea to consider making sure that all that information is deleted. And in general, people are going to be starting over when they get their, their Facebook or other accounts. Uh, Adam D., yeah, we should still try to figure out what actually would be the right policy, especially because government intervention, uh, which lawmaking is, is so dangerous. Yes, we should figure it out. The problem is I don't trust anybody in office to do so. I trust the market to do it uh, with with far better accuracy than uh, than any any seven thousand year old dinosaur on Congress because the Earth is only well seven thousand would be too old, right? The Earth is only six thousand years old. The Bible tells me so. I'll close because I just have a few seconds. Illinois has That's a, a joke. biometric Ken information Ham, privacy act. Our state does which is to regulate the commercial use of facial, voice, finger, and iris scans and the like. We're now in a fulsome debate on that, and I'm afraid Facebook has come down to the position trying to carve out exceptions to that. I hope you'll fill me in on... Of course they are. ...and how that is consistent with protecting... Oh, good. He doesn't. All right, next video. Getting pissed off. This is Lindsey Graham from South Carolina. Lindsey Graham, 
you know the testimony of Lindsey Graham will be wildly insightful. I apologize for putting Lindsey Graham on your screens in advance. Uh, who's your biggest competitor? Who's your biggest competitor? Uh, Senator, we have a lot of competitors. Who's your biggest? Who's the biggest one? That's what I asked. Mm, I think the categories of... Do, do you want just one? I, I'm not sure I can give one, but can I give a, a, a bunch? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, go ahead. I asked for the biggest. Give me a bunch. There are three categories that I would focus on. One are the other tech platforms, so... Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, we overlap with them in different ways. Do they do, do they provide the same service you provide? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would put them into different categories uh, because, you know, that we overlap in several areas. Do they provide the same service you provide? N no. No. Because Facebook does a lot of different things and we overlap with several companies. God, you're so dumb. Look at his dumb face. Mm -hmm. uh, Zamcast, am I legally allowed to make a, a Lindsey Graham joke that applies of his, implies of his sexual orientation? Uh, you are legally allowed to do so, sir. He is a public uh, figure under the, uh, despite several people's misunderstanding of a public figure. He is a public figure as a nationally elected uh, senator, and you can make basically whatever statement you want so long as you don't know it to be false and similarly maliciously disseminate that falsehood, that known falsehood, for the purposes of causing damages to him. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and make jokes about him. He's a, he's a pile of garbage. Um, in different ways, different let me, parts let me put of it, this yes. way. If I buy a Ford and it doesn't work well and I don't like it, I can buy a Chevy. Or a Dodge. If I'm upset with Facebook, what's the equivalent product that I can go sign up for? Gab, Mines, Twitter, Google+, Plus, uh, <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> oh, what are you waiting for to become a senator? Oh, God. Uh, that would be a disaster. <laughs> we know why he wants to keep his data private. I want to keep my data private because uh, if you catch my data, you might catch my privates. Uh, well, there's the second category that I was going to talk about. Or I'm not specific. talking about categories. I'm talking about is there real competition you've you You... Mm. You have to talk about categories because Facebook offers several different services. It has a private messaging service. It has a, a point broadcast service where you can just spew your nonsense into the ether like we all do. It has private grouping services, so it acts like a bulletin board. Uh, it, it has advertising services, so it acts like every other advertising platform in the world. J just, again, just die. Die off, please. Face. Because car companies face a lot of competition. If they make a defective car, it gets out in the world. People stop buying that car, they buy another one. And if they can't buy a car, they buy a bus ticket, you idiot, which overlaps in several ways with auto dealerships. Or they take a taxi, or they take an Uber, or a Lyft. Have you heard of Uber or Lyft? Look at your dumb, fat face. Oh, I hate these people. Is it an alternative to Facebook in the private sector? Uh, yes, Senator. The average American uses eight different apps okay. to communicate with their friends and stay in touch with people, okay. ranging what, from texting what, apps the, to email. What's the same to... service you provide? Yeah. What, what's an app, uh, sir? What, what is an app? Well, we is, provide a number of different services. Is Twitter the same as what you do? It overlaps with a portion of what we do. You don't think you have a monopoly? Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like that to me. Okay. <laughs> they don't. And uh, someone asked this question earlier. Someone asked this question earlier, and I apologize for forgetting who it is. <sighs> Let's drop this now. There's nothing inherently wrong with being in a, a monopoly. There's nothing inherently wrong with having a monopoly. This is a weird thing that we have all been conditioned to accept as automatically bad. And it isn't automatically bad bad. It can be bad, but so can just about everything. And if you think, if you think, if you're in this camp, and I apologize, if you have been brainwashed through years of uh, education to think that monopolies are bad, okay? I want you to ask these following questions. 
How did they become a monopoly? When your answer is logically because people found their service to be better than all of the other services, you have your answer as to why it's not bad. So then you have to ask, what's the danger of a monopoly? The danger of a monopoly is that it will increase price to be out of reach after becoming a ubiquitous service. Okay, so everybody has it. Everybody wants in on this product and then suddenly they price themselves out of the market for some segment of America. Okay, lots of things are priced out of several segments of America. Automobiles across the board are priced out of people's price range except for used services. So yes, there is some level where they can price themselves out. But what happens when you price yourself out of your market? You lose customers. You lose revenue. So you either have to increase your price so much that you will make up for the lost customers through lost revenue, or you have to reduce price to reattract customers. That's ultimately good for all consumers. When you increase price and price yourself out of the market and you stay there, what happens? Well, someone, someone else can come in and create a competing product at a lower price. Because if you're priced above equilibrium, then someone else logically must be able to do it cheaper. So then what happens? If someone can do it cheaper, one of two things will occur. People will either move to the cheaper product or the, the dominant product will lower its price and go back down and allow consumers to, to consume the content that they're after. This is universally the ultimately good move for consumers. I'm so tired of this myth that monopolies are monolithically bad. Monopolies are bad when law enforcement supports the monopoly and prevents competition. We see this with small monopolies like cable companies, telecom companies, uh, when Congress has come in and regulated out the ability to compete with these people, yes, you have a state enforced monopoly, those are bad. The, the initial monopoly that they wanted to bust up was uh, what, standard oil. Do you know why it's called standard oil? Because they took kerosene, which had no standard recipe across the United States, had different levels of volatility, different burn rates, and caused fires all over the place. And they made a standard recipe. They made a standard combustibility measure and they provided it to everyone so that when you bought standard oil in Illinois, you bought standard oil in Arizona, you had the same combustibility rate. You didn't have to have any different expectation. And lo and behold, they cut down on house fires by a ludicrous amount. And they built a monopoly because they built the best product that was available at the time for lamps, period. And then we came in and busted them up because they they dominated the market. They had something like 90% share. Why did they have a 90% share? Because they made the best product available. But they didn't have the monopoly on everything. Someone else could compete if they could create a better product. Rockefeller happened to uh, do a lot of things right. but uh, And his descendants are disgusting garbage. Make no mistake. But... But seriously, we've got to stop with this uh, monopolies are bad, okay? Uh, Mr. Garrison. <laughs> monopolies are bad, okay? Okay? Do you have a, a monopoly? Uh, uh, who is your biggest competitor, okay? Uh, uh I agree. I hate them, and you can't be viably competed against, but... That is because the government has instituted their monopolies. The government has instituted them and protected their monopolies, and we need to stop. Uh, here we go. So they might become abusive to their workers, but do they? Do they? Or is that propaganda? Like, in all honesty, do they become prop uh, abusive to their workers? Because if you go back and look at the early American... Um, abusive companies when they used to build cities, right? Companies used to build cities around power plants and house all of their employees and provide all sorts of things like restaurants and grocery stores for their employees. And part of the compensation was, we'll give you a house. We'll give you a house. And you go and read, uh, actual reviews of these companies, what they come across is saying, well, we don't really like the fact that a company owns this much of their employees work, uh, you know, their, this employee's life, basically, but they're still better than comparable 
free cities. Like that's that's a stunning, stunning. Michael Rockefeller uh, wasn't trash. Eat and frown rip. Um, not all of them are trash. Okay, not all of them. I apologize for overly generalizing, but uh, Rockefeller the fourth or whatever the congressman was. The congressman, okay, the ones who are in public office, they're trash. How's that? Is that is that better? Um, so, anyway. Anyway. And no, the competition of Standard Oil was not impossible due to patents. Uh, but if patents are making competition impossible, who enforces the patent system? Let's, let's ultimately look to the source of these problems. It just seems to constantly go back to government as the source of the problem. They're enforcing monopolistic control. Not every, co not every country has a patent system that's as, as uh, strong as ours. Ours is actually, I believe, anomalous. So, <laughs> Check my claim. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, happy to be, I'm happy to be wrong. Let me, let me put that out there. Guys, prove me wrong on plenty of stuff. I love to learn. I'm happy to be wrong, and I will make retractions all over the place. Uh, you know, or not retractions, but I will. I will admit to being wrong and learn. Uh, you will not find me uh, defending some position in the face of evidence. Uh, although I may have a different opinion than what the evidence provides, we'll we'll see. But uh, feel free to check me on stuff. I don't know everything. And I'll, I'll, you know, I've been drinking. I will certainly scream about all sorts of stuff that I don't have expertise on. So show me wrong. Happy to do it. Happy to learn. Anyway, let's get back to this Lindsey Graham. It doesn't. So Instagram, you bought Instagram. Why did you buy Instagram? Uh, because they were very talented app developers who were making good use of our platform and understood our values. It was a good business decision. Not <laughs> is a good business decision. Yeah, well, why? Of course. Point is that one way to regulate a company is through competition, through government regulation. Here's the question that all of us... What? What does that sentence even mean? Do you mean a second way is through government regulation? Because the best way to regulate companies is through competition. Uh, and you'll find that a lot of regulations stem from actual private competition as well. Uh, I see a super chat on the video, but it's not coming through on my chat. There we go. Winthrop Rockefeller was trash? I have no idea. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Oh. Got an answer. What do we tell our constituents, given what's happened here? Lindsey Graham, the only thing you should tell your constituents is, I resign. I resign from my post as senator. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in electing me. And I hope my successor has lots to do for you and uh, my constituents. I value you entirely, but I resign. Thank you. Why we should let you self-regulate. What would you tell people in South Carolina? And Ballwinder, yes, Disney has tried to actively skirt around those expiration using their vast resources to influence government officials to change the rules. I know that given all the things we've just discovered here, it's a good idea for us to rely upon you to regulate your own business practices. Well, Senator, my position is not that there should be no regulation. Okay. I think the Internet is increasingly important. You embrace important. regulation? I think the real question, as the internet becomes more important in people's lives, is what is the right regulation, not whether there should but, but be or not. But you as a company welcome regulation? I think if it's the right regulation, then you yes. You think the Europeans have it right? Uh, I think that they get things right. Have you ever submitted? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. No, it isn't. Europeans get nothing right. Uh, Don't bow to the European. Yeah, Adam D., I agree that a first to file is blatantly unconstitutional. Absolutely. So would you work with us in terms of what regulations you think are necessary in your industry? Absolutely. Okay, would you submit to us some proposed regulations? Yes, and I'll have my team follow up with you so that way we can have this discussion across the different categories where Don't I do think it, that this cuck. discussion needs to happen. Uh, this is what a tech company cuck looks like. 
I'll submit you the proposed uh, lordship over us. He should send a letter that says nothing get bent. I look forward to it. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking oh, out gross. our YouTube channel. Ew. I am so sorry for subjecting you to that. Please don't sue me. All right, guys. Uh, real quick, we've got two more videos to go through. This first one is a casual reminder of what we are dealing with precisely in Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, hold on. Here we go. You kind of need to remind yourself that you need to focus and um, and try not to let stuff bother you as much as possible. But it is going to bother you because you're human. And, and I was human. I am human still. Um. Sure you are. Sure you are. <sighs> but, um, but, it, but I was just referring to myself in the past. Um, not that I was not human. Um, Everyone in that room was murdered by Skynet the next day. Jeez. All right. Now, this uh, this next video I'm only going to do because this is the these are the people that run your nation, y'all. Uh, they're who we give the power to. This is them at their brightest. How many data categories do you store? Does Facebook store on the categories that you collect? Senator, can you clarify what you mean by data well, there's, categories? Well, there's some past reports that have been out there that indicate that, it, that Facebook collects about 96 data categories. Then the answer is 96, you dumb hag. Categories for those two billion active users that's 192 billion data points that are being generated i think at any time uh, from consumers globally so how many do you, does facebook store out of that do you store any senator i'm not actually sure what that is referring to yes they store all of them they store the data you idiot could somebody call you up and say I want to see John Kennedy's file. Yes, someone could do that. Absolutely not. Could you liar, Zuckerberg. Someone could call you up. I, I should do it. I'll call Zuck and say, uh, I want to see John Kennedy's file. You, if it, not, not, could you, not would you do it? Could you do it? Uh, in, in theory. Do you have the right to put my data, a name on my data, my and data. share it to somebody? I do not believe we have the right to do that. Do you have the ability? Senator, the data is in the system, do so... Do you have the ability? I have the ability to murder a lot of people, but I don't have the right to do it. Oh my gosh. Mm. Technically, I think someone could do that, but that would be a massive breach. So we would never do that. It would be a breach. Are you it willing to breach? change your business model in the interest of protecting individual privacy? No. Congresswoman, we are... No. I'm not willing to change my business model. We'll just change whatever aspects of the privacy we are deficient in. Why do a lot of the questions suck? Because these people are the dumbest people on earth. They're so old that they have no idea how any of this works. Guys, I'm likely too old to be discussing how Facebook works, if I'm being brutally honest. And I'm far younger than these dinosaurs. <laughs> Do you know what a photocopier is? Have made and are continuing to make changes to reduce the amount of no, data. Are you that... willing to change your business model in the interest of protecting individual privacy? Have you ever opened a business, Ms. Eshu? I'm not sure what that means. If I choose to terminate my Facebook account, can I bar? Look at that. Look at his face. His, his face is taller than Trump Tower, for one. Two, you know an intelligent question is going to come out when there is this much forehead frosted with white hair. 
Facebook or any third parties from using the data that I had previously supplied uh, for any purpose whatsoever? Yes, Senator. If you delete your account, we should get rid of all of your information. You should or we do. do you? We do. How about third parties that you have um, contracted with to use some of that underlying information, perhaps to target advertising uh, for themselves? You can't. Do you, do, you with, do you claw back that information as claw well, or back? does that remain in their custody? Well, Senator, this is actually a very important question. I'm glad you brought this up, because there's a, a very common misperception about Facebook that we sell data to advertisers. And we do not sell data to advertisers. Well, we you, don't sell data to advertisers. You clearly rent it. No! 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 No, 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 no! You old cuck! They don't rent it. You place an ad and they use the data to target the ad to the people that you want it to go to. They don't give it to you because if they gave it to you, they would be giving you something absurdly valuable for a small amount of money. You tell them what you want and they're, you're buying the access to their algorithm and not the access. You're buying the trust in their algorithms to distribute your ad appropriately. You old... <sighs> Couple things. Uh, Adam D. No, I know the staffers are. I know the staffers are babies. But it's the Congress people themselves. And trust me, do you think John Cornyn like actually listens to a 22 year old staffer about social media issues and understands what it is? That's the real question. Uh, so here we go. Do you call a photocopier a Xerox? No, I call it a copy machine. Uh, isn't the same Zucked was on social network. Is that any good? Yeah, how do you rent data? Good flipping question. Right? Because once you have the data, you necessarily can't give it back. Or, I mean, you, you can't unhave it. You have the data. I, I guess you could promise to delete it, but there'd be no assurance. Uh, Zamcast. Yeah, all... Cruz uh, was a moron in a lot of ways. And just use the time to score cheap political points. Yes, so did all of them. They're all doing that. That's my point in all of this. It's all just marketing. It's marketing for votes. Uh, do you really think that congressmen actually think all of this on their own? Like they sit down and think about it? No. No. That's the, that's the problem. They get, uh, they get the most dangerous thing on earth. They have someone with a lot of knowledge about it tell them something, and then they run with it. Um, quite a story, right? Dorm room to the global behemoth that you guys are. O only in America, would you agree with that? Uh, Senator, you, mostly you in could, America. You couldn't, you couldn't do this in China, right? Or what you did well, in 10 years. Well, Senator, there are, there are some very strong Chinese internet companies. Right, but... You're supposed to answer yes to this question. I have a script. I have a script. Even if Facebook doesn't earn money from selling data, doesn't Facebook earn money from advertising based on that data? Yes, Congresswoman. We run ads. That's the, the, the business model is, is running ads. Well, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? I don't know, Orrin Hatch. How have television done it for decades? Oh my gosh. Look at this guy. Do we seriously think that this guy doesn't need to just crawl into a Pringles can and die off? Senator, we run ads. How could you possibly sustain a business model when you don't charge people for your services? Oh my God. All right, guys. Uh, we're two and a half hours in. This has been wonderful. I love you all very much. Uh, where's Al Franken? Yeah, resigned. Resigned. Orrin Hatch is 84. 84. Guys, he's above the life expectancy for men. He's above the life expectancy for men. I'm just saying, if you're above the life expectancy, maybe you shouldn't be in Congress. 
Uh, jeez. Just shameful. Just a shame. Just a shame. Time for sleep. Yes, I fully agree. Time for sleep for me as well. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up to if you have any closing questions. Please feel free to to uh, drop them now. Um, my video stopped a long time ago, so I don't know. Hopefully, I can catch up. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I'll be able to see when the stream is actually ending. Because uh, I apparently ended the last stream a couple seconds early, so I apologize. Um, if you guys have any last-minute questions, please ask them now. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. I really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and watching this. Of course, like it and share it and all that stuff. All the marketing stuff. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you don't. If you have friends that you think that you would that would find this uh, entertaining, please uh, have them subscribe as well. I really really appreciate the word of mouth, uh, support that I get from you guys. Um, and, uh, the more people who watch, of course, the more content I'm able to produce as, as time goes on. So, uh, speaking of old men, have you seen the sick stuff happening to Stan Lee? No, I have not. Uh, specifically when will Congress invoke the commerce clause and destroy the internet entirely? It's coming. The commerce clause is the most misinterpreted thing I've ever seen. Can you prove Zuck is a robot in a court of law? Man, I would love to do discovery on that, buddy. Any opinion on Comey's anti-Trump book? Uh, I haven't read it, but I mean, come on. Like, come on. <laughs> are we are we still listening to James Comey and why? Uh, does anyone outside of a news company with a vested interest in James Comey being right actually care what James Comey has to say? No. Get out. Retire. You're done. Are you angry that Tess isn't here currently? I assume she isn't anyway since she hasn't replied or opened Bob. Yeah, I, I am. She said she'd be here. Mm, huge bre breach of trust. Uh, I didn't answer the Dragon Ball Fighter Z question. What was that? I missed it. I missed it. Uh, Monty, Matty, Matty P on the road, uh, re-ask it. Sorry, I missed the question. That's why I didn't answer. One of his former business associates drew a pint of his blood to stamp books. <laughs> Did he draw it like while he was sleeping or uh, eating oatmeal or something so he didn't know? Hit that like, smash that subscribe, and hit notifications and put it on. <laughs> Do you have a good uh, shovel? Why are the blinds closed? I have a... Don't hide from the white. I have a terrible shovel. Uh, I have a terrible shovel right now, actually. Um, who do you hate more, Zuckerberg or Congress? Congress, 100%. I mean, Zuckerberg's up there, but Congress, I just, I hate him. They're terrible. Why wasn't Zuck sworn in for his testimony? I don't know. I can only assume it has to do with him being a billionaire and a media mogul. Oh, Tess is here. Good job. Uh, and having the ability to just say, I'll come, I'll come, uh, eat some uh, humble pie, but I'm not going to do it under oath because I'm not qualified to answer these questions. And he's not y'all. He's the CEO. He's not the legal counsel. Be sure to turn off that pesky ad block. <laughs> yeah. Turn off ad block. When you watch my videos, give me money. Uh, are you ever going to follow through on getting the game? Uh, I haven't brought it up in a while and figured I was due to ask. Yes. Um, I will follow through on getting the game. Absolutely. 100%. Someone uh, sent me a controller actually, so I can play the game, um, I will do so. So, uh, however you can contact me off of YouTube, do so. And we'll, uh, we can play. Um, I will buy it, uh, probably in the next, uh, like Monday. How's that? What do you think of jury nullification in courts, removing those aware of it from juries through jury selection? Uh, I think jury, jury nullification is a good thing. I think courts remove people aware of jury, jury nullification because they understand that someone who mentions jury nullification is intent on doing it and that inherently biases them towards nullification is the thought. I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but I mean, that's, that's what they got to do. Just like if you say we should hang them all, they should probably remove that person as well. Forged a signature and a nurse did it. Quite a few things happened to him. Kind of sad way to live your last days. Yeah, that's that's too bad. Uh, Stan Lee created a lot of content that we we all enjoy. He wasn't sworn in because they were beginning thing, uh, beginning things right out of the gate. The tone of half half budding. 
Oh my goodness. Sorry for that yawn, guys. That was very unprofessional of me. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll blank it out, and once it goes blank, uh, then then we'll we'll end it. I'm on your Patreon. Uh, I should be able to find me there in your subs. Uh, I'll see if I can track down a contact for you. Yeah, or just send me a message on Patreon, and um, and then I'll uh, I'll send you my Steam information so we can play. Uh, that would be fun, and you can just absolutely demolish me because I hear competitive play on that is is brutal. Anyway, thanks, man. Uh, blanked out screen. I'm ending the recording. Y'all have a good night. Peace.